Okay. Okay, if you okay. say so. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Three, two, one. Well, I'm not sure if there is a God or heaven, but one thing I can tell you is your daddy's going to hell. Sausage. The Morning Stream. Don't eat that. It's Pluto. Hello, everybody. Welcome to TMS, The Morning Stream. Uh, It is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Scott Johnson here. And if I'm not incorrect, no, if I'm not correct, or if I am correct... (laughs) That's Brian Ibbett over you, there. You, you had it right the first time. If you're not, and if I'm not incorrect, that's Brian Ibbett over there. That's yeah. right. You did the right thing. I don't yeah. know why that sounded wrong as it came out yeah. of my mouth. You know, sometimes things come out and you it's go. It's the double, it, the double negative kind of freaked you out. The not incorrect. Yeah, it gave me pause is what it did. You could say, if I'm correct, that's Brian Ibbett over there. Like you could take out the double negative and turn it into a positive, you pessimist. Oh, I know, right? Look on the bright side of life. That's right. Everybody. Yeah. It's good to see everyone. We're here for another uh, morning stream. It is uh, Wednesday, so we got all the fun Wednesday stuff lined up. Watch for all of that. Yes, we do. I wanted to start things off with, uh, well, it's a story about people working in the street and cookies. All right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Which may sound like a thing that makes no sense, but I promise it will. As long as there's a bigger uh, pause or a comma or something uh, between (laughs) those things, then I'm... (laughs) Then I'm all I'm all in. Then but. you're all in. If there's if it just goes straight yeah. from cookies to street, then who cares? Um, no, cookies. this is yeah. this is a funny thing. So yesterday, uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if it's HOA or if it's just I don't know the city maybe. But there was a big crew doing street work in our in our street, just a little halfway down our, like our fixing road, fixing potholes or something or something. It looked like they were digging deep, so it may have been pipes or yeah. who knows. And um, yeah. having done what we did last year with our with our pipes, I wouldn't be surprised if. You know, they're doing kind of an overhaul of our, our plumbing out there, the main line or something. Mm-hmm. But they didn't warn, you know, there was nothing like, hey, you may not have water for a while or anything like that. It was just them out there working. And I saw it. And, of course, my first thought when I see stuff like that is I go, and Kim was home, and I go, hey, uh, this guy's on the road doing street stuff. I wonder what that's a, about. That's that's the end of my thing. That's all I think mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. Uh, I'm in between stuff. I'm grabbing breakfast or lunch or whatever it is. Lunch, I guess, because after the show. Sure. I'm going to go now downstairs and keep working. And she says, oh, and then I go do that. I come back upstairs, and she's got this big steaming plate of just out of the oven chocolate chip pecan cookies. Well, she just keep like dough refrigerated just ready for a moment like this? Like I, it's. Uh... I don't know where that dough, Carter may know this, but they. I think they made dough prior to this. And it was already okay. in the fridge, just waiting to be made into more cookies. It, like basically, just in case there are people out there working <laughs> on the street. I mean, kind of, yeah. So she, so she, she's walking by, and she goes, "Oh, I go, what is are you she doing?" Trying to wrangle like free cable or something. Oh, like, that's uh, a great idea. Get the get like the a, fiber in here is what we need. The fiber, exactly. Hey, while you're under there, if you see any fiber, like internet fiber, a uh, uh, T1 line or anything, uh, just c- hook it up to our house, would you? Thanks. Yeah, straight to the door, please. Yeah, I would love yeah. that. Um, but anyway, she's got the steaming <laughs> plate of cookies and a bunch of water bottles. And I go, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I'm just going to take some of those guys out there working. And I said, oh, <laughs> all right. So in my head, I'm like, oh, it's a usual, you know, Kim's always doing. She's thinking of other people. Great. That's great. I love that about her. Yeah. It's awesome. But also in my head, I'm going, well, I don't want these fellas to get the idea <laughs> that, you know, they can come around here anytime, get cookies or whatever. You know, right, so I'm right. going, I'm kind of a, I'm on both You're sides of this. like. These guys are just going to like come up with excuses to work on our street just so they could get free cookies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hello again, ma'am. We're working on the widget out here yes. and sure wouldn't uh, mind another plate of cookies. By anyway. the way, uh, my friend here uh, is gluten-free, so uh, just keep that in mind when you bring out the next uh, plate. Thanks. Uh, we'll be out here for another couple hours. Could you hurry it up, though? Because we're going to be taking lunch at noon. Thanks. Yeah. And those cookies would wreck you if you're gluten sensitive oh man oh i'm sure yeah i even had two and i wasn't supposed she to puts extra gluten i hear i hear uh, kim is uh yeah. is, she goes all in on the gluten. she's a, a puppet of big gluten and she, uh, she just loads those things up she did do the uh uh what's the chocolate that isn't is it dark chocolate yeah Carib? oh dark chocolate uh, like less sweet the, the, the best chocolate for you uh, yeah the one that's yeah chocolate. the one that's yeah. not crappy for you or you know yes like you say yes. <laughs> the dark least chocolate. The least offensive of the chocolate chips. The, the, exactly. The the best of the bad chocolate. <laughs> yeah. That sounds right. Anyways, so to, that's yeah. almost I think it might be a good time while we talk about this for me to enjoy a lovely 
Pocket Coffee, brought to you oh. by the Cholik Industries Incorporated. That's right. Pocket Coffee, ask for it by name, but don't keep it in your pocket because it'll be a, a Renny pile of goo. That's right. Pacholik, ask for it by name. <laughs> you want to be my importer expert. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a name like that. And it last does, night yeah. we saw the one where George runs out with his pants down screaming Vandalay Vandalay <laughs> Industries. It's so good. Yeah, it's such it was a great the best episode. line. And you want to be my importer <laughs> expert. <laughs> oh no, it was no, you want to be my salesman. You, you want, want to be, be my... my something salesman. What was it the I just saw it. Latex salesman. You latex. want to be my latex salesman. Yeah, and you want to be my latex salesman. Mm. Anyway, uh, mm. so she takes these out to these guys. It's good. I know you like these. I can't eat them. I can't mm. do them. But Kim loves them, by the way, Mike. So don't. they didn't go to waste. Mm. I just can't. It's, it's that It's that hardcore. Uh, it is the concentrate coffee. Yeah. That is. Um, mm. What do you call Sorry. it? What's it called? The um, espresso. espresso. It's like mainlining mainlining espresso right out of the um the barista's teat basically is what what you're doing with that stuff yeah it's espresso espresso is what that is <laughs> it's too it's much pork espresso yeah, yeah. It's too, it too much it puts me in the grave i can't do it but kim Ooh. loves it and uh so thank you again mike uh yeah. so anyway she takes these cookies out to these guys and the whole time i'm thinking well we're never gonna see that played again i don't know why i think these things right this is dumb yeah <laughs> <laughs> the morning of the loss of a, of another plate. I know. I don't know why I do this. Like it's annoying to me, but it's like a lot of things. This morning, I said to Kim, I said, "Hey, um, I've been thinking about my shoulder. It's not been great still, and I need to lift. I need to do some like hand weights. Where are those twenty five pound weights I bought a couple years ago?" And she goes, mm-hmm. "Oh, those are over at Taylor's house." <laughs> so she's on <laughs> constantly giving crap away, and it's yeah. it's great. Yeah. Again, she lives a very. Um, help everybody Generous. out in life that's, exactly that's her exactly. life and i understand it and i support it so i'm thinking about this plate and then right around the time i'm thinking about the plate bing bong i check the door and a guy i don't know his name is standing there and he says thank you so much this made our day here's the plate back you guys are awesome thank you so much so it was all <laughs> just exactly as it should be and all my fears were put to rest that we were never to see that plate again and even if we didn't, would I notice that we didn't have an extra plate? Right now, you would you would notice like, honey, I think we're one plate short. Uh, I just did I just did inventory, took inventory, and I think we're one plate short. Yeah, but this is a, just another example of how think of it as like a pie, and how your wife, you know, your your significant other should complete you. They always you know it's the the the, mm-hmm. the, uh, the old stereotype, ah, oh, you complete me or whatever. But no one told me that I would be a little sliver of the pie you know, a nice portion of it and that she yeah. would be the rest of the pie, all oh, the yeah. other pieces yeah. of the pie. No, no, we are, we are, uh, we are elevated by the people that we married, uh, yeah. you and I, and, oh, and in hell many yeah. cases, many, many of the people around us elevated by the people we married is, is, you know, you might think we're, we're okay. We're like, yeah, yeah. Well, we like Brian and Scott. They're, they're awesome people. Uh, yeah. We're, we are, we are, but the, the tiny little weight mm-hmm. <laughs> on the scale of life yep. that, yep. Uh, that our wives dominate. That giant and, uh, net full of fish is mostly our wives. We are, one, we are but one fish. That's right. Uh, that said, I think we need to go to uh, like uprinting.com and make some plates up that say, mm. support the morning stream on Patreon. <laughs> And when she goes out, and, like a little QR code on there, and when she takes the plate of cookies out, and they're like, "Oh, cookie! Oh, look, a QR code scan automatically adds two dollars to our Patreon account." Yeah, Perfect. they all they all have phones, yeah. so yeah, why not? Yeah. You have phones, like don't the cookies. You? Support TMS. Yeah, exactly. I love this idea. This is a great uh, new way for all us right. to. I'm always thinking. It's always, uh, always, oh. always thinking. Dude, it's the hustle bro economy we're That's in. That's right. Gotta, exactly. Yes. Got to keep it I moving. I put a sticker. So in my car, in my uh, the lift mobile, the cover mo- the cover mobile of liftitude. Yeah. Um, in the back seat, from from last year's uh, TMS Vegas, got to got to Vegas, got in the car. Yeah. Um, no, this would have been when I did my solo trip out there before to to case out the Fremont Street and make sure there weren't any cops that were going to have a problem with us uh, mm. recording our, our task out there. Right, Fail. right. Um, <laughs> got in the lift and the uh, the driver had this thing attached <laughs> to the headrest of the passenger seat that, that faced the back of the seat. And it's this little, this thing you get on Amazon for 30 bucks. It is a... Um, 
a charger, a three line, a three cord retractable cord charger. One of those where you go and it comes out and then if you pull it just a little bit more it, it rolls oh, back up kind like of a, thing like a cool it's like a cool vacuum uh, vacuum power cord yeah like cool vacuum like modern vacuum cords yeah. but it's got like a, a lightning cable a USB C cable a USB mini or micro whichever one that androids use and uh, and it plugs into the uh, the uh, cigarette lighter right and I get comments left and right on that thing. It's like, oh, man, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, I'm charging my phone. Or, oh, my God, I had 1% when I got off the plane. It was enough to call you, and that's all I have. So great, thanks. Sure. So I'm looking at this thing, and it's like, you know, it looks like a black cylinder with these lines coming out of it. And this last week I decided, well, what am I doing? That's like perfect advertising. So I decided to put a... I made a little sticker that looks official, put a little QR code on there and said, hey, while you're charging your phone, think about charging your income with Lyft. And it's got a little QR code with my referral uh, on there. So if they if they snap that and decide to start driving, because I get a ton of people in the car who say, how do you like driving for Lyft? I've been thinking about doing that and, you know, need a little extra money and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, um, you totally should. And I, I can... I can't interrupt the ride. I can't cancel the ride to show them my QR code so that they can be a referral. So, oh, right, because that's that's yeah. a big blocker right there if you can't do that in real time. So this is a perfect totally way is. around exactly. it. Exactly. It's like, uh, oh man, you know, I'd love to refer you, but uh, if I go to that screen, it'll close the ride. Dumb lift. Come yeah. on, fix that. Yeah, that's dumb. So I just made a QR code for it, and uh, we'll see if it works. I mean, it is completely. This is what's called passive income. They scan it, they start driving. I get three hundred bucks in my account if they if they last a month. <laughs> yeah, passive income is where it's at, man. That's yeah, the way to exactly. do it. Do they? Do they? Um. Uh, yeah, if you, you, you know, I Matt you're not wrong. I might get more if I do an affiliate link for the charger. <laughs> oh, good point. Even if they, even if they scan that and go to Amazon, it's like, uh, what seven days if they buy anything else yeah. while they've got before they close that window, they'll. It'll, uh, yeah, that's actually a good point. You yeah, might, that's you not might bad, make more actually. doing that. I might that. make yeah. more money that way. We'll try it out in a week. It's a removable sticker. We'll try it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And in a month, I'll swap out and do the charger. Uh, it's too bad QR codes don't send you to both. You know, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, did, uh, burp, forgot, burp, beep, beep. Can't remember. Oh, are you uh, going to, uh, you should share the link to the cord so that people can, uh, get one oh, yeah. one. you know what i will do that and make it an affiliate a... link make it an affiliate link Brian. <laughs> well yeah of course i will yeah. i automatically you know, does that with the links that i do on amazon anyway let's see it is the nice um re- track. yeah we can oh, put it in chat right. yeah. people rush out there grab themselves a retractable uh, multi-cord yeah because this is even cool if you're you just want one of these in your car you know like yeah i could use one i want it for um, myself i'm gonna look it up Oh, orders. Go to orders, Brian, for F's sake. Because we're always trying to get, like, a, I don't know, better cords in our car. Kind of hate yeah. just having a dangling whatever. Plus, I will say I this. Know. I love my Volkswagen. have enjoyed the hell out of it. This is a great car with one design flaw. The USB cord that you plug into the front, there's one in the rear for people in the back. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. one in the front is recessed way under this little door you open where you can keep change and other stuff. Uh, cigarette lighter area zone, you know, but oh, yeah. it's so yeah. far down there, and it's made for people with. It's made for Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Peter Dinklage can get his hand in there, or a, a right, three year old right. child yeah, can do no, it. Exactly, yeah. So if you get once you you know once you've got the thing plugged in, great. You could pull the cord out to unplug it, but it's getting the the USB plugged in there. Yeah, That's and the, you already uh, have a fifty fifty chance of having the two the two point connector turn the right way. Yeah, because it's USB. It isn't USB C. So I'm going like, oh, it's the wrong way. Is there a three year old? You know, where's where's Phoebe? She can put it in. Good lord, I hate that. It drives me nuts. Get me a toddler stat. And it come out with like, I think I still even have a little scratch scratch scar. But anyway, I come out with a little scar every time because it's like, ah, eh, eh. and it's just so I can you know I can hear Fleetwood Mac or whatever I want. <laughs> and I like it wired more than than uh, uh, yeah. the other oh, thing. For sure. So that's my thing. Anyway, uh, all right. Well, that link is out there now. You all can get your uh, your deal. There. Go get your go get your. Uh, who makes this weird thing? It's Upro O H L P R O. Oh, I don't like Upro. That name. That's a dumb name, no, isn't I don't it? Either. 
How come Anchor doesn't have one of these? Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's you, cool, you know? dude. It is cool, yeah. And so, like, they're, you know, they're they're just, they pull that thing out, charge their phone. I'd argue leave their this phone is, in my car. This I'd argue this is made for this. Well, it, it even is. says the destru- it destru- sh- description is Lyft, Turo, Uber, Act, Taxi, all exactly. that stuff. Exactly. But- I mean, it is, it is so... It is so made for um, for people who lift. And here's the funny thing: frequently bought together. Oh yeah, uh, f- please rate me five stars and give me a tip. Signs that you can also hang from wow. the uh, from the passenger things. Like no, I, I'm don't. I definitely <laughs> won't be doing that. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. It's like a little towel dispenser in a bathroom, kind of. The design. The design of it. <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah. That's exactly. cool. All right. Those Let's are the worst, out. by the way. Those stupid towel towel. Uh, oh, I hate them. I hate them. The ones that are the, that are uh, touchless that you just wave your hand and towel comes out, great. Those are fine. It's yeah. the ones where the action of pulling on the first towel yep. releases the second one because nine times out of ten, I end up with two little pieces of paper towel in each under each thumb. Yeah, it's a garbage mechanism. It doesn't work. right. It's a garbage mechanism. Yeah, fix exactly. that. All right. Also, the ones that the electronic ones where you wave your hand. Mm-hmm. And they fall down into one of the blowers, <laughs> or right into the trash. Like yeah, right into the trash yeah. where everybody else is. This uh, seems stupid to me. Also, make sure that is. stuff's close to where the door is because I like to dry my hands and then use the towel, the to, open towel the to open the door. If you're not yeah. doing that, you're gross. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> judge. Well, I don't want to judge people, to, but, but I don't always do it. Uh, we got a call from Jesse, garbage can, Je- uh, garbage can, Je- uh, jerky Jesse. Jeez. Well, yeah, he's a garbage geez. man. I always forget to, yeah, <laughs> I always forget is. that. Anyway, he wrote in. It's a little update from uh, him because okay, he was cool. he was going to drive into the lake. You remember if we did a certain thing or whatever the deal was? <laughs> I, I think if I didn't start giving the score. <laughs> oh, I think that was him. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Uh, here's his follow-up. Hello, Simon and uh, Brad. Uh, <laughs> this is jerky Jesse again. Just wanted to give you an update. <clears throat> Still driving, not in the river. I do want to thank you guys for updating uh, the scores frequently. Um, I do would like to point out that what I originally was calling for was when you guys are doing the Ted Bowie feud. And like when it goes ding and Brian goes off on a tangent without telling us what number that was on the list of 10. Oh, my instead God. Instead of saying, oh, that was number five, you're like, oh, those are great. Fantastic. I loved those as a kid. And then Scott starts going off on something, which is awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> but I want to know what number on the list. Thank you. Go to the show, you know what? He's a very he's a very demanding yeah. listener. Um yeah. Well, I'd like um, jerky, but you haven't made any since meat prices went up, uh, Jesse. So, uh, yeah, where's we our can't homemade jerky? Get what we want? Yeah, we can't where's get what we want? Tit, tit for tat. We've been giving you tat. Where's our tit? Where's our tit? Get us some yeah. tit. All right, <laughs> Carter. I promised I had context. Okay, don't worry about us yelling tit at the top of our lungs over here. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, no, yeah. you're right, and I'll I'll, I'll practice today, Jesse. Totally, uh, totally fine. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will. Um, all right, I'm going to do this last call later in the show. Uh, oh, but okay. for now, right. we're going to jump to the Ted Pooley feud. Yeah, we got uh, things to get to. We got stuff to do. That's right. I'm pretty sure Dunaway's in there now, is he? He's in. He's in the game, so we know he's... Excellent. We know he's, he's on tap. Oop, oop, oop in the boot is what he is. Yeah. So that's, in Canada. <laughs> that's what they say up there. Canada! Uh, look who it is. That's our old pal, Brian Dunaway. One day after his birthday, his his naming day, uh, he's here. He's back. He's queer. Get used to it. Hey, Dunaway, what's going on? How are you? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Too late to talk about my birthday now. Should have no. done that before you hung up on me on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew that one was going to sting a little bit. Best birthday present ever. Yep. Click. Yep. But look, you're always going to be my, you'll be my friend forever that says birthday with an F, and it's my favorite thing birthday, you do. Whatever, whatever, both. Bo- both, I know, I know. Me. Both. I know. Yeah. I, we both both. have, we both, we both have both. this issue, both. and uh, it's fun to celebrate. Uh, it's good to have you back, Don. I hope you had a nice birthday. Did you do anything fun? Anything oh, dude. Cool? Absolutely. I, all I did was, uh, I went and visited everybody, all my family. All my family live close, but not super close. So it's yeah. like 15 mm-hmm. minutes to get to everybody's house. And it's all in this outside circle. So it's an all-day trip to visit 
my uh, my dad, my kids, my mom, and get back home. And that's what I did. I got up yesterday morning and just uh, hit the road, yeah. visited each person, and said, "Hey, it's my birthday." Yeah, mm-hmm. I said birthday, yep. just like that. Yep. And they and, said, uh, "Why do you keep putting the f in there, Brian? We raised you better than that." <laughs> <laughs> we taught you better. Yeah. What, when, what they mostly said is, oh, no, we forgot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, your birthday. <laughs> Shit. Uh, scramble. I, I'm going to Walmart for no reason. I'll see you in a half an hour. <laughs> Walmart <laughs> as if. Yeah. More like the 7-Eleven. That's right. Or the Piggly Wiggly. Uh, Wiggly well, anyway, it's good to have you here, man. We're going to play a game. and I Oh, I guess I should add a contestant. Let's see. Who was third we today? We need, we need someone to play. I believe someone named, where is it? DJ Axes, we done him before. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I don't know if he's ever played. I, I, he, I see him DJ, in the chat pool all the time. Me yeah, it's ask some, you yeah. a question. Something yeah. about his name is familiar, but maybe it's just because we see him all the time. Uh, he is our uh, he or she. I can't. I don't even know who we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Is here, and uh, we're gonna ring him. It's ringing. We have the rings of ringage. Uh, we. Uh, oh, there they are. Hello, is this DJ Axis or Axes? It is me. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Have you been on before? I swear you have. I have, uh, kind of recently. Okay, that's why. Not you. Last week, so. I knew you were familiar, and now your voice is familiar, so now I feel justified. Oh, hi, DJ. Hi, DJ. Uh, hello. It's good to have you back, man. <laughs> happy birthday, Brian. Mine Aww. Was, uh, Thank you. Week. Yeah. Oh, no, nice. cool. Happy, nice. happy belated birthday to you, too. Yeah. Hope you had a good time as well. Everybody with birthdays, yeah. March babies. We drove, um, mm-hmm. Yep, we drove three and a half hours to go to a Bucky's, and that was that oh. was my whole birthday. What's a buff? Wow, what's a that what's is a, amazing? What's Bucky's a, is huge. What is a yeah. Bucky's? I've never heard of it. Oh, <gasps> Scott, you're gonna go down a rabbit hole and need to get to the south immediately. <laughs> really? Bucky's, Big, Bucky's is a freaking. gas station chain. Okay. Imagine yeah. if Disneyland was a gas station. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Bucky's amazing. with the two E's on it. Our first yep. Bucky's just opened here in Colorado. Colorado uh, Saturday, I think, and you'd think that uh, Jesus Christ came down Himself yes, and yes. Uh, and made an appearance by the, you gotta by the, get a the shirt. fervor over this place. Wow! A hat. Why is this oh, such yeah. a big whoop? Is it just because they got crazy <laughs> cool stuff there? I guess it's, it's I huge. All right. it's, it's huge. It's just a big it's, location. It's marketing. It's just really yeah. good marketing. Okay. Oh my gosh! Know. There's like a, it's like a whole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a dollar store. Yeah, yeah, or like a five. <laughs> It looks like a five below. My gosh! Wow. All right. <laughs> y'all have a y'all have Cracker Barrel out there. We do have Cracker oh, Barrel. Barrel, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has a has a little bit of a modern Cracker Barrel feel to it. Really? So. Uh, I I'm do. waiting for a ride to a take me up near barrel. there, and I'm definitely gonna go. Definitely gonna go check it out. Yeah, I kind of want to yeah. now. When you, Maybe when you do, you have you got to get the Beaver Nuggets. I know that doesn't sound <laughs> very appetizing. Yeah. But beaver no, nuggets. they're like uh, they're like um, Captain Crunch cereal, aren't they? Like um, uh, like big form Captain Crunch cereal. More like more like pops is what I yeah okay kind of yeah corn pops yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 oh there so it is so those and uh, um, I didn't realize that's where you could get them oh I love those all right cool mostly a Texas I'm thing at my enamel pin of them right now that's oh right. very nice <laughs> it looks like it started as a Texas thing there's a ton in uh, let's see a couple in Florida all spread out where you guys are South Carolina of course yeah. and then one in Denver and that's it nobody yeah. else west of Denver man get them out yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I, my my first time we went to a, a beach uh, for my birthday in 20, 2020, which was you know right before the lockdown. Yeah. And uh, we were we came home early because we weren't sure we were going to be able to get back into Tennessee. Oh. <laughs> it was a whole bunch of like, oh, they're going to start shutting down borders, and we're like, we're going to go home. Oh, no. And oh. so we're driving home from the from the beach, and we're like, oh my god, it's a Bucky's, and we just pulled over and stopped, and that was a <laughs> absolute blast. That sounds Fantastic. intense. Doesn't that sound intense. Like we're going to shut the border. I forgot what twenty twenty was like. Oh yeah, man. yeah, oh, no, yeah. It, was, uh, yeah. it was a it was a shit show. That year, that year, <laughs> that year sucked ass. Uh, all right, well, let's get to the uh, the show that does not suck ass. It's called Tadpooly Feud. Right. Brian's going to explain the rules and the prizes and the whatnot. Brian, take it away. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. Whoa. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics. Nice. Scott and Brian, you have to predict the answers that they gave us. It is their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. DJ, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian. If your team wins, you'll get a prize package that includes Destroy All Humans 2 because I guess they didn't uh, in the first destroy all humans. There are more humans left that mm. uh, yeah. that they need to destroy. Uh, the reprobed edition of that, and because uh, our winner on Monday couldn't use it, scorn, which uh, oh nice which got rave reviews from our two players yeah. here. Yeah, scorn is great. Also, yeah. destroy all humans too is very good. They're both good games. Yeah, cool. 
Uh, Reprobed is a good uh, Steam Deck game, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in fact, I think Destroy All Humans Two also works great on Steam Deck. Um, so excellent. I think you're in good shape here. Uh, excellent. Well, let's uh, let's kick it off. Let's go. Let's do it. What's our nice, topic? Nice, nice. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, put your hands on your buzzers and get ready to answer this. We asked 457 tadpoolers, "What is your favorite strategy video game?" Scott. Starcraft. Show me Starcraft. What? Number two. Number two oh, answer on nice. the board. Mm, One answer mm. will beat it, Brian. I don't know. This is so good. Because uh, oh, I'm going to go with uh, the Civilization. Mm -hmm. right. oh, Show shit. me Civilization. Yeah. Number one answer on the board, Brian. Congratulations. That means you get control of the board and you get DJ access to help you out. I have a yeah. quick. I have a quick question for the host. Uh, uh huh. Merged. Our merged. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was yep. it. That was exactly my that, question. That yeah. is all the civilizations because people sometimes put civilization, sometimes put civilization yeah. five or civ five. Uh, there's no way of knowing what they meant when they just put the base game if they meant one of the sequels. So makes sense. Okay, that's good. what that's I figured because I didn't want to ask you like yeah. civ one. You need to be like, yep. hurry up and answer. What are you doing, googling? And I'll be like, oh my god, <laughs> just civilization. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, the, yeah, you could you could look at the question as what is your favorite strategy video game or video game series? I guess if there you, you if you need to do that. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that was the DJ Bucky. I was going to ask was uh was is it just video games or is it all kinds of games? Well, oh, the, the question says video, video games. games. Mm. Okay. Oh, video games. Right. Gotta say video games. Chat room could be uh, weird. The, so. the question the says okay. video games, yeah. but the tadpole <laughs> is the tadpole. Yeah. <laughs> Stratego. All right. Do you, DJ, do you prefer to be called DJ Axis, or is that just your handle? Is that what you, is that uh, you get with DJ? Go, uh, Trey is Trey. Trey, is there we go. All right. right, Trey, perfect, perfect. Hey, Trey. <laughs> uh, I have one in I have oh, one right. in my head. Uh, oh, hi. Yeah. Um, do you have something in your mind? Uh, I'm For staring at all game? of my all of my Warhammer minis next to me, Ooh. and so that brings to mind Total War or Warcraft, uh, which is what I thought might have been the first one. Yeah. Uh, so I think yeah. we've got a few in the bucket we can go to. But what were you thinking? Uh, well, we can. Uh, I like yours, Warcraft. You said or Total War? Uh, I, which I would go, go Total with? War. Total War. Let's do it. That one. That one feels. It's, more it's much more strategy. It's much more pure. Yeah. Strategy. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Show me. Total War. Yeah. Number nine nice answer points. on the board. Woo, that's I knew, good points. Though. I knew that was going to be lower, nice. but it's really good points, you bastards. Yeah. That is almost the best points you can get. Yeah, Brian uh, now leading with 10 points to Scott's two points. Oh, thank you. And that was number uh, what this, did nine. This score update brought to you by <laughs> Beef Jerky. Wish I could have some. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, take that, Jesse. You're gonna have to move your beef jerky business to Bucky's. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no yeah. kidding! Oh, oh. <laughs> they, have a, they have a beef jerky counter. Um, of course and, they uh, do. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's. Yeah, it's, it can't be freshly made, right? It's got to be uh, <laughs> freshly. Made. Well, it's uh, they have recently their, cured. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say they have the recently cured counter, and then they also have packaged jerky. So nice. sure. All right. Oh, jerky and nuggets. Those all sound good. <laughs> sounds like my Jer sounds like my ju junior somebody, high school life. Yeah, that's the, right. The bang ass with jerky nugs. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, jerky nugs. Mm. Jerky nugs. Mm. Oh, when they find a way to combine the two, then we're talking. Yeah. All right, uh, seven answers still on the board, Ryan. What do you got? Uh, let's Trey, what you thinking? Uh, you want to go with another one? You want to go with the one that's my favorite game? Let's let's go with your favorite. Okay, well, I, I, the Age of Empire series. That's just yeah, my favorite strategy one. game. Lo, 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 All right, show me Age of Empires. Oh, Very good. God. Number three answer on the board. Three oh, oh, bring oh, up to, oh, bring oh, up to 13. Because oh, oh, some weeks. Sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Some weeks I just like I'm totally out of touch with the tadpole and I'll say something. I'm like, this is gonna be a total bomb. So that's good. We're we're in yep. we're lined up. That's good. Yeah. All right. You guys are aligned with your brains. Your brains mm -hmm. are connected. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Got something else, Trey? What you thinking? Uh what is it? Was it red alert? Uh no red uh, alert's command, great. command and conquer. Yeah. There you that's go. What I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. command and conquer, red alert. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I think command Agreed. and conquer is gonna be up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Show me Command and Conquer. Damn. Number four answer on the board. Right down the line. One, two, three, yeah. four. You guys are uh, gonna... 17 points now for uh, Brian Ooh. and Trey. Yep, they're going to run the board, I'm afraid. I feel it. Well, that'd be good. It would be good either way. Well, it's good um, for Trey. Yeah. 
It's yeah, not yeah, good yeah. for Scott, who really wants to play the game. It's not good for my <laughs> my massive ego that wants to win things. <laughs> sure. Uh, oh, um, oh, I I know one that I would like to put up there, but mm-hmm. I don't know if if it's always up there. I like the XCOM series. Ah, that sounds good. That was yeah, on is my. That, is that, one, is that, is, is yeah, a they, good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerks, okay. jerks. All right. Show me uh, XCOM. Number yeah, six. That's a good one. You're re- you're being really slow about flipping the thing. You'll say, yeah, and then do, you make me wait. Well, yeah, part of it is the slow. thing's slow sometimes, Exciting. right? It's not always sometimes you. Sometimes the thing is slow, but yeah. sometimes I'm slow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you never know which one it's going to be. Well, I sometimes sometimes I want to make a joke, but I'm like, oh, will that give anything else away? Or will it lead them down a wrong path or something like that? So I don't do it. So Yeah. Fair, fair point. Oh, yeah. You never yeah, you never, never manipulate the uh, never players. Manipulate. Never. You never manipulate. Never. Manipulate. Never manipulate. Nipple Again, me. Taking can you back to my uh, junior high school years. Can you manipulate me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. right. What else you got? <laughs> what else did you pick up at Bucky's? <laughs> oh, uh, I got I got, got a nice, um, what is that? Uh, the the Roosevelt's type shirt, you know? So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to say that um, Cleo bought me my... Uh, uh, my what's his face Bob Ross T-shirt at a Bucky's because oh. uh, they that's, have the, yeah familiar. wow yeah, like a little Hawaiian style shirt that she got there yep. that's cool you know they have that kind of stuff she probably yep, bought right. my uh, lemon heads there for all I know I don't know <laughs> <laughs> she might have yes yeah. <laughs> it's a shame I didn't get right? that but I did yeah. get a free Dairy Queen uh, ice cream cone yesterday and I was <laughs> really confused was that I for was, your it was my birthday <laughs> oh, yeah was it was my birthday, birthday and I was yeah. very excited and I was just stopping in to get a small vanilla cone as I occasionally do. Especially on my birthday, and there was a line. There's never yeah. a line. Yeah. And so I pull up, and I'm like, I'm like small vanilla cone, and they go, they can pull around. I was like, okay, cool. And uh, so I pulled around, and I hand the lady my card, and she says it's free. And I'm like, ah, you do thought you know it was it's my birthday? The, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what you thought, but no, it's the yeah. whole world birthday was yesterday. Whole world's yeah. birthday. I actually <laughs> yeah. got one, got one uh, as well. And at two thirty in the afternoon, when I was out getting something from Ace Hardware, no line whatsoever. I just wow. drove around, got my cone, and. Continue to try and eat while I drove, which was a real uh, <laughs> smart thing to do with an ice cream cone. Very good. Always All right, well, what, what else we have? Do you think we should go back to Warcraft? Do you think that's... Guaranteed yeah, it's on there. I, I think so. It's... I mean, we kind of went through a lot of the pure strategy games that I like, yeah. but I, I'm trying to think bet of you, that might bet have you mo- in, I'll bet you money Warcraft's on there. There's just like no too. way it's not. Yeah. I would eat All my right. shorts if it's not on there. Oh, okay. even better! So you're gonna. Ooh, this is really good. Really good high stakes. We get that. We got that in right. We all heard that, right? Yeah, but I have right. meat. Don't forget, I have meat shorts, and they're seasoned just right. Oh, so jerky shorts. Ooh. Jerky oh, shorts. Darn. Yeah. The, jer- the jerky jorts. <laughs> jerky jorts. <laughs> Love it. Oh, don't tell John oh, about that. Jesus. He'll make the next season of uh, WWE 2K4. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, you go. You going with Warcraft? Warcraft. Yeah. All right, show me Warcraft. Yeah. Number yes. five answer on the board. 28 Woo. now to two, I think. Let's see. 7, 8, 15, 25. Mathematical elimination. 27. Mathematically limited by one point. Yep. Damn. Woo. Damn. All right. Hardly knew yeah. Angry Birds. I'm going with Angry Birds. <laughs> okay. uh, wingspan. Um, <laughs> I'll, throw, I'll throw up my, my current favorite that has like 17 active players on Steam, which is uh, Realms of Ruin. Which, uh, oh, Realms of War- Ruin, Warcraft. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Warhammer game. Yeah, that's a good uh, yeah, game. Warhammer game, yeah. Scott- Scott, sure. it's in the it's in the fantasy universe. Yeah, so yeah. The age, the, all that know. Age of Sigmar stuff's fine. I just, you know, uh, I'm a 40k I'm guy. Wearing, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my Sigmar jersey right now. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm so so into it. Yeah, is cool. like 40k like too loosey goosey? We'd have to be narrow it down. Can't like like Warhammer. We can't do right. A little uh, too loosey. I don't know. It's up to you what you want to well, say. <laughs> I would say all of the 40k games are. Uh, the strategy ones are not super great. So right. It's kind of There's a, a couple of good uh, ones, but they're also kind of obscure. Yeah. So I, you're mm-hmm. better off saying what, 40k and being general. Yeah. I think. If I was Dune because they had Dune game. Yeah. The, oh, the Dune game. Yeah, that's right. Scott, Scott can't say it, but I can say Dune. Yeah, I can't. I'm not allowed. <laughs> he's, I'm not allowed. He's, uh, he's he's only allowed two mentions of Dune uh, per episode now of TMS. <laughs> Oh, there's one. There there's one. That's one. I only got one left. We only got one left, so uh, use it wisely. All right. Fair. 
All right, let's let's uh, go with uh, what, what would you say the game was that you liked? Dune two. You're playing trade. The, the... Oh, uh, no, we're we're not gonna say that. No, no we're not doing that. Game. Okay, we're going. Okay, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I said Dune Imperium. Uh, I don't oh. even know if that game's out actually, but it is. It's out now. Hi, uh, uh, reviewing Dune really in... well. It's based on the board game, which I never played. I, I, yeah. It seems interesting. Yeah. Kind of want to check it out. Yeah, just Dune in general. There's a couple of Dune yeah. strategy games. So yeah. Yeah. All okay. right. All right, Gold Dune. All right. Uh, show me. I guess that was more of like the Survivor intro. <laughs> oh, there's the, there's the one oh, the sound no. we were really looking for. Now, now Scott uh, gets a turn. Yeah. Now Scott turns, finally turns gets out a turn. We're not the least on Algaid. Yeah. After yeah. you have to use everything up. Dune, by the way, number fifteen in the list. Oh, pretty good. Pretty um. Good. All right. I'm gonna say. Um. We're kind of running out, so I'm just. I'm gonna, I really yeah. like the Company of Heroes games. Um, oh, so I'm gonna say Company of Heroes. Yeah. See if that's on oh, there. Cool. Uh, show me Fast Company of Heroes. Damn it! Oh, that deserves no. to be on there. It's really good. Um, let's see if oh, uh, other people, <laughs> other people felt that way. Yes, Company of Heroes. I mean, it's World War II. Uh, it's kind of depressing. It's super serious. No, but it's no, good. no Company of Heroes. Sorry, oh no. man, you guys are it wrong. Don't like it. It don't like it. <laughs> there, and I just remembered the one I should have said, and I'm pissed. But go ahead. Oh, it's your oh. turn. What was it? No, I'm not telling you. you go ahead. <laughs> I may still get a chance to say my words, so I'm gonna oh, hold them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm noticing an interesting little colon there in the total war, and it makes me think. Okay, okay. you know, there's there's 19 different total war franchises, right, so we've got right. a few things we can go through. Hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe Total War Rome. What do you think, Brian? That's a big that one. sounds good. Yeah. I like it. I'll I'll yeah. I'll save you. I'll let you. I'll uh, save you the trouble. I, get I out guess of total I should have asked for clarification. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, out, get out of total Listen, war. Listen, Brian is so <laughs> unfamiliar with total war that he said, "Oh, all total war must be Warhammer." So I just because so uh, many people makes well, sense. So many people said total war Warhammer that I've put lumped all the total wars into there. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> now, one that I've been revisiting that I really like, but I don't know if it's popular enough. I, I love Northgard. Do you think? People oh, Northgard's that, awesome. That's a great I game. I love that game. I've yeah. been revisiting lately, but they yeah. that's funny because they made that that same company are the ones that just put out Dune Spice Wars last year, which oh, I don't I know if know a lot of people, people know about that it, but too, it's Scott. Oh, uh, no. that is two. I can't do it again, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I fill a third. Oh no, three. Shit. What do we do now? Uh yeah. What do you think of Trey? What do you think? Should we Northgard oh, it? Maybe or Diner Dash. What do you feel about Ooh, Diner Dash? Ooh, Diner Dash. I didn't think about that. That's an interesting concept. <laughs> I'm I'm out of ideas, Frank. <laughs> okay, in that course, in that case, we'll roll back with North Guard, and then we'll try okay. Diner Dash as our final. How about that? Yeah, go for it. Give us some North Guard. All right, North Guard. Show me North Guard. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew it. Um, right, okay, you I would be. You thought of. I would be shocked oh. if it's not on there. I hope it is because then I know my truly our people listen to the show. Uh, the game is um, Homeworld, the oh, Homeworld series, World. also by so Relic good. Entertainment, who made the, the the other one I said. But yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. All Homeworld. right, let's take a look. Show me Homeworld. Oh, are no. you kidding me, dude? Um... <laughs> Looks like it's bottom of fifty. Uh, one person said it, so it was tied for thirty-six. <laughs> one person. The fact that there are thirty-six <laughs> games. Oh wow! So no, no, there so are. Fractured. There are. There's a lot of uh, fracturing. You're at the bottom, then. Okay. Yes, exactly. I there, there are 118 games. Oh um, wow! Oh my god! So I cannot believe nobody put that. That thing is the most influential, awesome thing in the history of ever. It's so good. And they're making a new one. Homeworld Three is coming. You losers. Losers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, All right. Back to what did you say? Uh, what did you say? Right, so. <laughs> Not Angry Birds. He said Diner that, Dash or uh, Clash Diner. versus Zombies. You know, <gasps> or, Cl Clash of Clans, the classic. Oh, oh, yeah. Clash of Clans. Mm -hmm. See, there's so many people who played that. That might be. I know. Yeah. How about some Clash? Wasn't good though. Well, no. <laughs> All right. Show me Clash of Clans. That is your third strike. 28 points to uh, Scott's uh, insurmountable two. Uh, Scott, you got one last strike to uh, see if you can maybe get some more stuff on the board here. All right. I'm going to go with something we talked about recently on uh, Play Retro. I'm going to say um, 
I'm going to say Advance Wars series. Advance oh, Wars. that's the Love that game. I totally didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, Still, I'm, as soon as that thing goes on sale, I'm picking it up, the, the, the reloaded or remastered or whatever it is. All right, show me Advance Wars. Oh, no, too advanced enough, for these people. Uh, Tied for 36th place. Only one person wow. said Advance Wars, but uh, no matter. No yeah, matter. That crazy. still means that uh, Trey wins. Yeah. You can get those, you can get those great Undefeated. games. Undefeated. Yep. Yes. That's right. Uh, let's take a look and see what else is in the list here. Number seven Final oh, Fantasy that's funny. Tactics. I, I, yeah. That's, that's good. Fair. That's funny. I just put up a, a meme last night. It was a little box of Tic Tacs that had a label that said Final Fantasy Tic Tacs on it. <laughs> that's where I saw that from. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. pretty cool. Funny. Anyway, uh, all right, number eight. Uh, risk. Oh, risk. Interesting. Risk. A, yeah, I didn't think of that. There is. A, I have somebody, that on the Genesis. Somebody yeah. said the GBA edition was their favorite version of that. <laughs> that was so, a good version yeah, of it. Yeah. It yeah. turns out the GBA version of most things were the best versions of yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Including, by and the then, way, I think Brian. So here's what you should do. You should take out your Ambernick yeah. and get part one and part two oh, of Advance Wars on there. I I yeah. I stand by this because I have the modern one. I think yeah. the old ones are better. I think they look. Oh, really? I okay. think they look better. I'm I, pretty there's no sure point if I in... charged my Amberdick, it would open up yeah. to Advance Wars right now. Yeah, <laughs> like that's yeah. such a good game. The last time I used it. <laughs> nice. So Let's good. Play Advance Wars. All so right, good. cool. Uh, all right, show us number ten. Speaking of Advance Wars, there's the People Edition Fire, Fire Emblem. emblem. Oh, Shit. Fire Emblem. We just talked about that too after we did yeah. the Advance Wars. Oh man. I think somebody in the chat's been yelling that, and we just never. Picked somebody up. has been. Yeah. 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 Well, they feel justified was, now. That was the high point getter. Yeah. But you guys, either way you won, you dirty. Either yeah. way you won. Let's talk about some of the other ones that were in the top uh, few here. Uh, chess, people said. Uh, Tetris. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Settlers mm -hmm. of Catan. Mm -hmm. Stratego, mm -hmm. Stratego. Definitely going into a board game realm. But there are video game adaptations of yeah. these. Uh, FTL, Faster Than Light. Portal, mm -hmm. SimCity. Mm -hmm. Age of Mythology. Portal. Alpha oh. Centauri. Uh, Cities, Skylines. Disagia or to say dis, uh, is that how it's pronounced? Disgaea. 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 Mm -hmm. Disgaea. Disgaea. Look at this guy over here. <laughs> Look at this guy. Uh, Fallout Four, Halo Wars. Some of these okay. uh, clearly. Okay. Not, uh, oh, Halo okay. Wars is Halo Wars is kind of a yeah, but, well, but, but it's a it's a top Fallout Four. I guess Fallout Four is a is a RPG strategy, right? Like sort of. I don't. You I know what? Not say strategy. No, yeah. it's got yeah. some I mean, base my building is stuff. Just max max strength and punch, like so. It's you know. Really, yeah, really it's a pure, that thing's a pure RPG with some base building. That, that one's wrong. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Uh, Into the Breach, Master of Orion, Monopoly, Mist, Plants vs. Zombies, Populous, Red Alert. Uh, is why is Mist on there? there? Mist and Portal are both so wrong. That is so wrong. <laughs> Mist is definitely wrong. You got to uh, take Uno. some strategy. What, what is strategy but puzzles, Scott? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. So. Yes, you got to sure. strategically uh, figure out how to turn that knob so that the uh, ship comes up out of the water and lets you go to the other age. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Zelda. On people. Mm -hmm. uh, Afterlife <laughs> Among Us, Baldur's Gate 3, Battleship, uh, Bioshock, <laughs> Borderlands. Call I think people just started naming video I'm games. I was video yeah. games, yeah. Candy yeah. Crush, uh, <laughs> Coffee Golf, uh, Dark That's Wizard. Oh, I mean, it's not uh, strategy. Dog. It's like, oh, you guys are killing me. They are killing and then, me. And then so many variations of, I don't play video games. Oh, video Jesus. games suck. I don't oh, like strategy gosh. games. Uh, pass. A lot, a lot of those. Lot was it all Stephanie? I don't play video games. It was all Stephanie. It was all uh, Genie. <laughs> I know I these apps. people. Yeah. yeah, I hate apps. Apps are the worst. I hate podcasts and I hate apps. I hate everything you guys do. Here's the, Finally, here's the, yeah. what remains of Edith Finch? Oh, not a strategy game yeah. at all. More of a walking simulator. Nice job, guys. Um, <laughs> nice. Well done. Congratulations. You win again, uh, Trey. It's uh, awesome to see a, a, a double winner like yourself. How do you feel about your big win? I oh, feel great. Uh, yeah, isn't it, yeah. What was it? Scorn? Isn't that the like Catholic, uh, like very Catholic inspired? No, game? you're thinking of um, blasphemy. Um, oh, what are you? Yeah. Yeah. Atheist? It's, it's, yeah. You think it's the HR Giger one? You're you're thinking of blasphemous blasphemy? part one and two. Yeah, blasphemous. Which is great. Yeah, blasphemous is yeah. it's an amazing series, but this thing is more yeah. like uh, first person. Oh, kind of misty to be honest, but first person yeah. oh, kind of Geiger, Geigery, gross. It's it's real creepy yeah. and weird. Very bloody. I, 
I yeah. remember you talking about it on core at some point. Yeah. That's, that was coming up. Yeah. It's feel, red. Feel you're pretty gonna, good about my wins. So. You're going you're gonna to yeah. enjoy it, I promise. You're going to have a whole tray full of life. Oh, that's a terrible joke. All right. We'll see you later. Uh, <laughs> oh, and Brian will send you those codes, as you're well aware. That's right. Uh, right. Brian right. Dunaway, uh, you know, post-birthday, you're just a you're just a hoot having on here. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you sound I'm older, though. Day. Yeah, you, you sound a little sound older. like you're getting I, old. Yeah. I am getting old. It's, Not it's as pretty quick. rough. No, just a little no. slow on the reruns. That doesn't make sense. But I do know this. Uh, Friday, we're going to do a play retro episode. Uh, you and I, we're going to get together for Future Shock. I'm very excited about that. Uh, S- system Shock. Or System I'm, Shock, I'm sorry. Interesting future Shock. I yeah, keep yeah, doing shock. that. I keep doing that. You'd think I'd mix it up with Bioshock because that's where it all ended up. But that's where it goes. Yeah, yeah, that's where it ends up. Yeah. System we're Shock. We're starting step one. System uh, Shock. So that's next week, and we're excited about that because, or not next week, this Friday. Because uh, it deserves its time. Also, kiss our butts. Oh, he didn't say no you. I gave him time mm. even. He's slow. It's the age. I think yeah, that's he's, it. He's, yeah. yeah You're guy. a year older. What are you going to do? Uh, can't keep up with our fast-paced humor. I mean, it's show. it's hard to, Brian. It's hard. <laughs> hey, did anyone say, remind me if anyone said, um, uh, what's the name of that game? Uh, shoot. Find it here. Is it called? Oh, Crusader Kings. Was that on there? Crusader Kings. I think I remember seeing that on there. Crusader Kings. Yes. Uh, Crusader Kings. And uh, I had three with that one because um, apparently that was three is the, the one. one that somebody said. Yeah. Yeah. People love. I mean, I love it too. It's just it's kind of a long hard game. You do. It. The game is less. It's it's about moving your armies around, but it's also about mm-hmm. screwing over your kings. And hmm. the, the the queen had a baby. Put a snake in its bed and try to kill it because. <laughs> oh God, really? Okay. Yeah, it's weird. It's got some crazy stuff in it. It's really I interesting. Do, uh, I do like um, something you recommended, which was um, against the storm mm. that was on sale on Steam uh, a couple weeks ago. So I picked it up and uh, I absolutely uh, enjoy it. So yeah, very much. That, that one's a great combo of like strategy and city building and roguelike and a bunch of stuff. Uh, that game is rad. Very cool. Game. Yeah, yeah. You guys should all get it out there. Uh, All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Tom Merritt will join us. And when he does, boy, howdy, you better be ready (laughs) because we got technology to discuss. That's happening coming up here shortly after that recommendals. So please stick around. Brian, play a song while we uh, have a moment. Yes, I've got uh, indie that I've been uh, holding on to for, oh my gosh, about a month now. Sorry, Amy. Uh, Amy, Chuck and Amy. Uh, Red Fraggle in our chat said, hey, our good friend Jim Infantino, um, related to uh, uh, Marvel artist Carmen Infantino, one of my favorite Star Wars artists, has released a new album called Utopia Revisited, and it's really good. I asked him to send me a couple of choices for songs he thought might land well with the TMS community, and he gave us permission to play them on the show. I figured this stuff is a good fit for Indie in the Middle, signed Amy. Nice. Uh, indeed it is. I listened to these and immediately put them in the list and then forgot I had them in the list to move up to the top of the list. So <laughs> finally... Uh, Finally get around to it. Um, This is uh, from the brand new album from Jim Infantino, Utopia Revisited. This is the song Psychic Zombies. Thou shalt not kill just because a baptism turns into a little drowning. Everybody's going to blame somebody. For my next trick, I need a beautiful woman's. Somebody's been watching a lot of King of the Hill, all right? Apparently so, yes. Hey, Brian, who was that again? That music That there? was Jim Infantino from his brand new album, Utopia Revisited. Check it out. I love both songs that Amy sent. Uh, Utopia Revisited is the album. The song is called Psychic Zombies with an X. Psychic Zombies. Psychic Zombies. Zombies, yep. yes, exactly. That makes perfect yeah. sense to me. All right, you guys. Sure. Have some fun with this right here that I'm about to play. We want Tom. We do indeed. It's Tom Merritt, everybody. He comes on the show on Wednesdays, talks about the daily tech news show, Tech News of the Day, uh, as they prepare for a fantastic episode today, which sadly I'm not on, but Patrick sadly. Beja is on today. Oh, that's going to be really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom's reaction is perfect. I yeah. didn't know you spoke French. Well, <laughs> oh, 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 of course. We yes. got a lot of surprises here, Tom, that you don't know about. <laughs> I hope Patrick doesn't cancel. Uh, if he, <laughs> he would never cancel based on that because I've I've uh, said both of those things to him, and he while he hasn't canceled me, he has rolled his eyes at me. So. Yeah. Oh you, yeah. You will get a firm eye roll. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I'm looking well, at his a well deserved eye roll. I'm looking at his flag or his scarf he gave me. That's that's basically the French flag hanging around a skeleton's neck, and I promise it doesn't mean anything. 
that I did that. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. just, I just thought, just where am I going to put it? Just huh? Uh-huh, yeah, just yeah, asking the hard Yeah, now that you one. say it like that, I think it does mean something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, uh, it's good to have you here, Tom. Uh, as sad as I am not to be there, it was on Monday. It was super fun. But uh, what's going on today that's uh, burning a hole in your little tech finder? Yeah, if y'all slept on Monday's show, you missed Scott Johnson. Uh, we dug into some GDC news there. That's uh, another reason Patrick Beja is coming up today. He's going to talk about Unity's big report on gaming trends that they they gave at GDC and uh, specifically multi-platform. So kind of carrying on the conversation we had Monday, Scott, mm. uh, about like the new strategies and the and the fact that Microsoft in particular is is branching out and pursuing an actual multi-platform strategy and all that. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, yesterday's show is probably what uh, TMS uh, viewers who haven't seen yesterday's show would be most interested in. NVIDIA uh, had its developers conference for the first time in five years, and uh, it was like it was like a rock concert. Like it, it, it was the vibes that everyone reported are like it was like being at a Taylor Swift show, which made me think that maybe they had never been to a Taylor Swift show. But uh, I, I get the sentiment, which was like. Nvidia's on the rise, man. It, like everybody's positive about them. They're selling chips like crazy. And the takeaway I had from their big announcements, uh, which you, you know, the flagship was new AI chips. The Blackwell chips yeah. uh, are coming, which is going to power data centers, which will power AI, which will make AI more powerful, and all of that. Um, and, and we dig into that on DTNS. But but the overall takeaway is, uh, Nvidia is creating a bunch of platforms for you to develop your AI. So not just providing you the hardware, uh, but they announced a thing called NIM for you to develop your AI on without having to pay the big folks. So not having to pay OpenAI or Anthropic or Microsoft or any of those. Uh, You could develop your own model and run it easily. So NIM is a containerized solution. I'll try not to get like too too wonky about it, but essentially what that means is a lot of the work you would do in rolling out a, a new model is done for you. Uh, so you don't need to have on staff the expertise uh, to build something from the ground up. You can you can sort of take your your model and, and execute it and, and run it uh, either on your own hardware. Uh, it'll work on older NVIDIA hardware, so you don't have to, to pay to upgrade to new hardware, or uh, in the cloud. Uh, and Microsoft and Amazon and, and the big cloud makers, Google, are going to uh, offer this uh, as a cloud service as well. So again, the, the, the Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, very forward-looking, also like creating a robotics platform, Mm -hmm. even though robotics is still kind of a niche uh, situation, but, you know, expecting that to grow and 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 dip it a toe into quantum computing, too, which is, you know, still probably a decade off from being something massive. Yeah, these guys are it's the most pivoty pivot I feel like I've seen in tech in a long time. And it's not like an immediate thing. They've been, you know, doing this for a while, but Sure. But we're now at a crescendo point of like, oh, yeah, NVIDIA is not just making your games look pretty. There's a lot of stuff going on here. They, they talked a bunch in his keynote about um, uh, uh, healthcare and AI. And some of that stuff mm. was really fascinating uh, that they yep. got into. I would I would tell people to go seek that out if you haven't heard it. Um, but but yeah, they as a result, well, I think it's I don't know if it's still true today, but didn't their stock just like blow past Amazon and Google? Oh, yeah. No, they're 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 start. Well, I, I don't know if it's. I don't know who it's blown past because uh, I don't pay that much attention to the stock market. Right. But, but yes, uh, the investors have started to love NVIDIA. In fact, somebody asked a real good question in my YouTube comments yesterday. Uh, it was like, well, wait a minute. How big are they compared to Microsoft and Apple and, and such in revenue? Uh, and so I went and looked up the revenue numbers. Amazon has the biggest revenue number of all of them, but their right. profit margins are, are slim. But Them. it's like $160 billion, uh, in their latest quarter. Uh, Apple and, and Google or Alphabet have... You know, around 80, 90 billion, uh, Microsoft 60 billion, uh, NVIDIA is 22 billion, which, mm. you know, <laughs> I'd take it. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but that is definitely, <laughs> it's, it's a company that is growing. It's not a company at their size yet. Uh, but that's why investors love them because they have huge growth potential and rolling out services is a way for them to grow. And it's a very, very, you know, reasonable way for them to grow. So if you're an investor, you're looking at Alphabet, you're looking at Apple, and you're like, man, eh, they may have maxed out yeah. uh, on, on how much they can grow. Whereas NVIDIA has a lot of upside. Yeah, there's a lot of growth potential for sure. And also, uh, one of the, well, one of the concerns gamers have is that this means 
that they'll ignore them or that they'll forget yeah, about them or right. they'll forget where they came from. You know, there's always these weird little gamer concerns. Yeah. I don't think the that will happen. The consumer will become a sideline and no it, one will e- Exactly. And it may, that may be true by the numbers eventually or even now. Um, but I, I don't think they're in any, anywhere close to just saying, see ya, bye, we're out of that market. Like <laughs> no. that is not what they're going to do. So I think you've got a long time before that would ever even come close to happening. And they've also still got AMD nipping at their heels all the time that's um, what i was just about to say is like yeah. there's enough competition that if they were you'd be fine as a consumer because other folks would would jump in and fill the gap pretty competently yeah. which is why nvidia is not going to let that die because they they still have you know a very good business uh with selling consumers gpus and they don't they don't want to let that go yeah i agree well it's fun to watch this has been uh this is the only bummer about monday is that they're you know for day one there hasn't been any of the big keynotes or any of the big bombs dropped if there were going to be any at all and uh, later in the week yeah, yeah. so now yeah, patrick yeah. gets to put his little french fingers into it and <laughs> he gets the he gets the meatiest part of the pie instead of the little crumbs that come off the edge how, of the how crust. did how did you let this happen Scott? i know right but look at us over here at the bar before dinner having a plenty good conversation about all this breaking Definitely. latest stuff and now patrick gets right. some of the leftovers you're late for dinner patrick <laughs> yeah. there you go how That's do we go from good. pie to the bar i don't know yeah, what, i don't uh, know how that works <laughs> it's weird i don't know but i'm <laughs> in on both of those <laughs> Tom's a pie guy. He likes pie. Absolutely. Uh, well, all right then. We also miss Pie Day. We should have celebrated that when you were on last <sighs> week. But what are you going to do? Oh yeah, March fourteenth. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. It's now yeah. in the it's now in the rearview mirror. I prefer Tau Day, mm. which is double Pie Day, June twenty eighth, because that's my birthday. Oh, pow! That's right. We yeah. got a big birthday coming up for Tom, and for a very brief moment, I do. we will be the same <laughs> age for a little while. Yeah, and then what I will is be it, like a, six days that I'm oh funny yeah, yeah or something like that, and then I will be older, and then Brian will be older, and then we'll all spend a year going, damn it, Tom's just a kid. What's going on here? <laughs> Wait and till I, you get to be our age. Tom. I call you right. young, and you know, yeah. give you all the respect you deserve. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, oh, anyway, that's well, the daily tech news show. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll be today, uh, the usual time, and uh, it'll be awesome because Patrick will be there. We love him. I tease him, but we love him. So I'm glad he's back on today. Yeah, uh, no, he is uh, honestly uh, Patrick Beja and Molly Wood are the two most requested guests on DTNS, and we we've been having Molly on regularly, so very excited to get Patrick out of his his long dark finish night uh, and bring him back <laughs> on to DTNS. It uh, never ends over there. Um, anything else going on in the Tom Merritt world we should be aware of? Uh, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to live check up on Synced, uh, the book that I'm I'm doing on Unbound. Uh, thanks to everybody who has pre-ordered it. Uh, we, we are uh, 35% funded. Uh, so if you are interested in a book written by me about technology, take the recent Byte Dance uh, episode of Know a Little More that I did at knowalittlemore.com where I break down who owns Byte Dance, uh, how much influence could the Chinese government have on it, what do you actually need to be worried about, and what shouldn't you probably worry so much about. Uh, that's the kind of technology information I plan to put on Synced. Uh, with synced being, you know, more future proof, like, like, you know, explanations of things that aren't going to change rapidly. Right. It's called sync to understand technology and make it work for you. And you can pre-order it now. Please do at tomsnewbook.com. Excellent. Tom Merritt, everybody. You know him, you love him. We'll see you later today, or I won't, but everyone else will, or I will, but it won't be where I usually am. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Correct. That, correct. All, that all made sense, right? That was not confusing. 100% uh, clear. And uh, good. You understand. Good, good, good. That means no clarification will come later. No clarification needed on that. Indeed. Just on that. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little bit of my water go the wrong way when you did that. Good. Well, um, my, then, then, then my job is done. Your work here is complete. Not really, because we got to do recommendals. So this is all happening now. Um, we're going to add both Nicole and Randy to the program. Whoops. There's Randy right there. All right, we've added them. Now it's just up to them to pick up their damn phones. Answer already. That's right. Uh, boy, they're both they're both Johnny's on the spot. Well, here. what do you right after It's amazing. It's like you almost got into their heads and said, "Get in here." You use the voice, Brian. Help! All right, third reference. I won't do it anymore. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> hey, look who's on the phone with us. It's uh, our very own Nicole Spagnolo. Hi, Nicole. How are you? And she's muted. Nicole, Mark! Mark! Fix the microphone! Something's wrong. Did you change it? 
All right, we'll say hi to Randy while we're waiting. Hi, Randy. How are you? Good morning, morning stream. How are you? I'm, I'm good, man. It, it sounds like it sounds like WNBC. Do you remember that? Is I that do WNBC? remember that. WNBC. Yeah. That's a Paul Giamatti, right? right? right. From Private Parts. Right. I think so. Yeah, pig vomit. Yeah. What, whatever. Whatever happened to Betty Thomas? Right. Right. I don't Betty know. Betty Thomas right. was right. amazing for like years and years, and just like mm. vanished. What happened to Betty Thomas? I don't know. We we have a listener. Uh, I'll play a request uh, that they submitted a while back, but they frequently see. Marianne from Brooklyn, speaking of uh, Howard Stern and uh, WNBC, <laughs> private parts and all that stuff. Sure. Oh, man. I, like, I, like, I, I was, uh, you know, I was on the college radio station when I was in college. And, like, we had a professor who taught you to talk like that. Like, you were, you really? were not going to keep oh, listeners if you didn't talk like that. Yeah, they were Those sure of it back serious. then. That was a thing. Uh, it's no longer a thing. <laughs> Those people were wrong, it turns out. Uh, hey, oh, we've uh, totally lost Nicole. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, let's see if we can pull her back here. She was here, then came back, then went away again. Then I'll bet you this really is a Mark thing. Mark messed something up. I'll bet you. I'm sure Mark totally. Yeah, he, that's what he he's does. Not the wire whisper. No, he's the <laughs> mute. Oh, there she is. <laughs> There's the sigh. That that exasperated sigh could only mean one thing. That's right, <laughs> Nicole. Oh. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Yeah. Hi. I'm trying to get. I don't know what's going on with my headphones. I wonder if my headphones are broken. Well, they might be. Mm. I think Mark did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Clearly. He always does it. Yeah. Clearly Whatever it was, it was Mark. And uh, I'm fine I'm with you. I'm talking to you through my computer. If I can get, if I can get my... Uh... You sound yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're not, so I'm not here. You're on some sort of room mic or, or headset yeah, mic that's or something. What I'm trying to, yeah. yeah. But I don't hear any echo. So oh, it's not... I'm on the phone. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Here. Hi. Welcome so to your calls phone. were coming from inside Nicole the whole time. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, that's weird <laughs> because <laughs> usually you'd have a little phone icon next to your name, but I only see the computer icon. Right. So. It's a well, connected to iMac. I was going to say your computer is probably <laughs> using your, your uh, iPhone's microphone. So you yeah. just go onto your iPhone and click the little microphone button and switch it to um, switch it to Mac. Disconnect. I'm gonna, I'll disconnect it and see what it does. All okay. right. Let's try that again. Let's see what happens. Hopefully you're still here. You still here? I hear. Nope. She's... I, I see... Oh, now oh, you are. Oh, now we hear you. Well, the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do it. I'm sorry. That's all right. Listening. No, I like having a tech segment that immediately is followed by tech problems. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> That's right. No worries at all. I think we need to get Tim Apple on the phone. Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Tim Apple, yep. one of my greatest friends. He'll do it. He's your best friend. Hey, uh, let's get to it. We got record to do. I can do. afford a Vision Pro. <laughs> we have. <laughs> you really may not be able to soon. No, um, not five days. <laughs> nope. Uh, let's do a. Uh, let's do these recommendals. These are things we've seen on streaming services that we think are good yeah. enough that we come on the show and then tell people to watch. We're going to start with Brian, like we always do. Brian, what do you have, and what should we lead into with your clip here? Boy, this goes perfectly with our feud topic last week, which was uh, worst Nicolas Cage movies. If you listen to audience scores, this might be on the list. If you listen to critics, this is definitely not on the list. And I'm siding with critics on this one. I really enjoyed this. So you're going to hear a little Nicolas Cage here in a second. All right, here we go. This is my wife, Janet. Hi. Hi. I'm Claire. Hello, Janet. When did you get married? Oh, wow. That's about, well, let's see. 15 uh, years? Yeah, 15 years ago. Well, I'm so glad I ran into you. You've been on my mind a lot lately. I'm sorry, how do you two know each other? Oh, uh, well, Claire and I used to date. Yeah. <laughs> Wild, right? <laughs> anyway, you've been on my mind recently. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't thought about you in a while. <laughs> okay. Good to know, I guess. <laughs> anyway, the reason that you've been on my mind is because you keep popping up in my dreams. Really? Yeah. Like a lot in the last few weeks. It's so strange. You don't do anything. You're just there. Even if the dream's completely unrelated to you. Like the other night, a good friend of mine was lying in the street, hit by a car, bleeding, dying in my arms, right? And then, I, this is just in the dream, of course. And out of nowhere, there you are, just strolling by. Wow, I'm, well, I mean, that is so strange. So mm -hmm. I don't intervene at all? I, I don't help out? You're still doing that? 
Oh man! <laughs> uh, this the this, so this is the dreamy one. Nicole is missing. This is yeah. Nicole uh, uh, said yeah. It's called Dream Scenario. Mm-hmm. Just landed both on Max and Prime at the, the same time, so you can watch in either place. Uh, Nicholas Cage here's the premise. Uh, Nicholas Cage uh, starts appearing in everybody's dreams. He's this he's this you know uh, doofy kind of uh, family guy uh, or family man, if you will, um, who just starts randomly appearing in everybody's dreams, but not as a participant, just as this bystander who walks by. There's someone dreaming about being chased by alligators, and there's uh, Nicolas Cage as, uh, what's his character's name? Uh, Paul Matthews, just walking by, <laughs> just looking, or an Earthquake. He's- What'd you say? Is he aware? He is dream? not. He is not aware. And so people start coming to him and saying, oh, my God, I just dreamt about you. And uh, sooner, soon after that, it becomes kind of this um, this big sensation that everybody's dreaming about uh, Paul Matthews uh, or ha- having him appear in their dreams. And um, he becomes kind of a little bit of a, a celebrity because of it. And then things start to go awry as they do in these movies and i won't say i won't say what happens um horror and comedy it is it is you know what i I compare it to like when i when we started watching this and and stuff started happening one of the first things i did was look up to see if this happened to be directed by michelle or michael gondry michelle gondry the the french director who did eternal sunshine of the spotless mind Mm -hmm. because this feels like that style of movie if, and if you like that movie and you like um some of the ambiguousness that comes with the the uh the experience then yeah. then i don't you won't have a problem with this i think the, the reason that the critic score is so high and that the audience score is is lower is because um some of the people who who rate it low might have might have wanted um more things explained to them uh, and I'll kind of leave it at that. This is uh, a co-produced by Ari Aster, who I love for all yes. his weirdness. Yeah. Um, and uh, and in addition to Nicolas Cage, so his wife there, you heard in the clip, is uh, Julianne Nicholson, who played um, Kate Winslet's best friend in Mayor of Easttown. Mm. Oh, uh, I love her. She's great. She's great, and she's great in this. You also get Michael Sarah as kind of a um a tech fund uh kind of uh dude the tech fund bro tim meadows as the uh dean of the uh the school where where paul matthews works mm-hmm. um like a school figure yeah, yeah he does lately right yes yeah, exactly whether it's a principal or a teacher or whatever tim meadows i think has found a a niche he's yeah. getting, getting yeah. typecast man um this uh, yeah this i found to be uh, you you kind of described it, Nicole, as as comedy drama. It certainly does fit that. It is it is not straight comedy. You might be led to think that all right, yeah, fun. Let's watch this with the the kids. Things you know, there's a point in the movie that things kind of get dark in places, and so you don't necessarily want to maybe have the kids watch with you. But not so dark, not not dark enough that it's like a horror film. But it it definitely goes places. Interesting. Yeah. I've been curious about this one um, because the not just the disparity, and it's not like the worst uh, user reviews. It's like sixty eight mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. But the, yeah. but usually when you see a disparity like this, it's the other way around. Right, it's, right. It's the high audiences. audience score, yeah. low critics, and and yeah. uh, no, this this um, I'm definitely on the side of the critics. We really we both really like this, and we feel like. Um, there's th- this. This is uh, I think second only to Pig as. As our favorite critically acclaimed okay. Nicolas Cage movie, uh, for me, come on, Con Air is still going to be the top of the heap. Yeah, you got to uh, love. It really Con is Air. a heap. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, the I'm, Raising Arizona's up there, and, but I, I, I still, uh, still love it. Yeah. I haven't seen this, and I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm vaguely interested in this uh, Norwegian filmmaker who wrote and directed it. Um, yeah, Christopher, just because Christopher the, Borgley, the Borgley. phrase Norwegian filmmaker, it's not something anybody ever says. And <laughs> like, I, right. I really, really love that A24 has been making things like this happen. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I love it, dude. You know, it used to be kind of a joke. It's like, uh, well, Blumhouse is going to keep making these them their horror movies and uh, yes. A24 right. is going to make these like kind of indies, but they're more mainstream and they're somehow going to tap into all this stuff. And they have done exactly what they went set out to do. Those movies are great. I've yet to see an A24 that I was like, 
you know, that I didn't like. I've liked it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they're going to, they're surely making some stinkers, but I'm saying oh, I'm sure like, they are but, casting a nice yeah. wide net. They yeah, are, really yeah. Cool. And they're and they're not afraid to go to to jump onto something weird. There was another movie that I'm well, maybe I'll save it for a future. No, I'll talk about it really really quick, because um, uh, I'm sure I'll watch something else between now and then. But it's called Landscape with Invisible Hand, and it's another A24 film. Um, this was recommended to me by the New York Times uh, mailing list that I'm on, and I never would have heard about it otherwise. But it's about a uh, a future where aliens have come to Earth. They've uh, they hover over us in these giant platforms, and where they where they let the elite come up and live. The rich can come up on these little platforms that hover over the Earth and live, and then they they watch. Um, kind of like with social media, the humans that are left on Earth and you get higher points with the aliens if you have a relationship because they don't have love in their culture. So they, they they watch relationships and give those high points and they actually make money. You make money by having a relationship. So this, uh, this couple decide to fake a courtship so that they can just make the money from the aliens from the aliens and it's a bizarre it's it's really bizarre but that one's called landscape with invisible hand it's it's interesting it's definitely a24 it's definitely that style of a weird indie film but this is uh uh so that's kind of a, a mid commental yeah i just found a rotten tomatoes list that has 134 a24 movies ranked uh-huh. in, yeah. in order of their critic rating yeah and um you've never heard of like the bottom 15 and the and i think there's a genius there too You've mm-hmm. never heard of those bottom ones. They didn't promote it. They didn't, you know, like they, as mm-hmm. they were releasing a movie, they realized, oh, this is a stinker. They just didn't, you know, they didn't put it, <laughs> they didn't put it out in a place where you're going to know. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. Sometimes you forget that some of their best ones, like, um, uh, all of Lady, their best ones have had Oscar nominations. Yeah. La- Lady Bird, Eighth Grade, uh, Moonlight, freaking, these are huge. Marcel oh, the wow. Shell, Florida Project. Oh, really? That was yeah. A24? That's yep. cool. Florida Project was yeah, great. Yeah. Past Lives, a yeah. big one. A- that Amy, Amy uh, Winehouse documentary was them. Um, cool. Amazing stuff. Yeah. I. But then yeah. you're right, Brian or Randy, there's some real stinkers at the bottom of this thing. <laughs> when you, when you have those, that many, it's it's easy to have you know, list that, that yeah. far and wide. Mostly yeah. positive, those, though, looks like. Like most of this is. is a, there's a 2012 uh, Charlie Sheen movie <laughs> from May 24 call, called A Glimpse Inside the Mind of Charles Swan the <laughs> Third. I've never heard of this. What? What? Yeah, interesting. Oh, well, got me, got me curious. But the first, there's a total in the list. They have a total of 134, and the first hundred and uh, sorry, 114 are all all. Uh, I almost said frozen. I meant fresh. <laughs> uh, they, frozen. Yeah, no. Fro- know, <laughs> they're all the movie Frozen and Frozen Two, and uh, there you go. Right. Uh, well, uh, anyway, cool. so that is called uh, Dream Scenario. Uh, like I said, you can currently watch it either on Max or on Prime, mm-hmm. and um, I do recommend it. Uh, Nick Nicholas Cage, I just found out, got the Golden Globe nomination for um, for this this last year. So wow. I didn't realize it had been out long enough to to garner that. I guess it came out last year. Just got just made it to streaming recently. It's one of these weird ones no one heard of, and then here it yep, is on streaming. Pretty much. Exactly. I am going to watch that. Um, all yeah. right, let's uh, swing it on over to Nicole with uh, her recommendal. Looks like something the whole family can enjoy. The funny thing is, it took a year for Brian's to get it streaming. I think it only took mine like a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, it, but um, it, it's not because it's it did bad no, or anything. It's no, just it's one no, of these no. things. It was a big. It was a big. It was a big release. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. before before we get to my recommendal, I'm dying to talk to you guys about Alan Wake Two. Have you mm. played it yet? Uh, uh, no. Not. I have it. I have not hit play. Yeah. Someone gifted it to not, me. I'm, so I want. I'm, right. uh, so, I'm boycotting video games right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You remember my love of Alan Wake. That was like my game of the year. Yeah. Oh, totally. So, yeah. And then when Control came out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. So I I got into Alan Wake 2 and I'm really, 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 really enjoying it. <laughs> um, and there's a whole, like it's doing some really fun stuff with it. There was a whole scene and I even, I think I put it on threads. That reminded me of the opener of Peacemaker. Did mm. we talk about Peacemaker? 
Did you watch Peacemaker? Oh yeah. Oh Brian, yeah. I think oh, Brian, yes. Brian did the recommendal on that. Now I, I, I so it. badly want a season two of Peacemaker. Oh, yes. and that's, and that's, that's when they get you. That's when they come along and say, ah, eh, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just wanted to recommend that you guys play Alan Wake too. Um, it's, it's really enjoyable. It's a, you play as two different characters. You play as an FBI agent at first, but then you eventually get to play as Alan Wake and you kind of go back and forth. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's, I mean, last year it was just like a, 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 a whisker hair away from best, you know, game of the year. Yeah. Had it not been for Baldur's nominated, Gate last nominated year. Nominated for everything. Yeah. It, it's, I, it's, I it's like second best game of the year last year. Let's put it that way. So, I'm um, really enjoying it. Cool. So, cool. Cool. All right, I'm going to play your clip. Do you want me to play your clip or do you want to set anything up for this clip? Uh, it's, I, we, I watched this with the kids over at my mom's house. Um, she bought it and then like a week later, I'm like, oh, you should have it's on Max now. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it was fun. I don't know if anybody asked for it, but we got it. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, here you go. I'll play it. Wonka there. Uh, yeah, my daughter also awesome. watched this this week. She, you, Carter, what was your up or down on that? She didn't like but Timothy Chalamet liked- in it. Oh, really? But she oh, liked wow. the movie. They were okay with the movie and the music and the prequel and all that. It, yeah, there's it's a musical. I mean, there's a lot of singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's not just a musical. It is a musical by Neil Hannon of the Divine Comedy, one of my favorite bands. So yeah. loved the music for this. Loved yeah. the soundtrack. Yeah, that stuff's all no. good. I, I don't know. Like you said, you don't know if anyone needed this, but I don't know. It's fine. You know, the the Tim Burton thing left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. This is an actual prequel to the one everyone likes and shared a lot of the music. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I feel 100% fine that this exists. It's fine. I, I do, too. Um, and it was actually perfect timing because I think the week prior um, was when I showed Matteo the original uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. yeah. And so that kind of, like, shook him a little bit <laughs> watching <laughs> the original yeah it's yeah. it's a little dark you know it yeah. gets surprisingly dark in places so this was yeah. a little lighter and you kind of got to see and i picked that clip specifically because the really the first kind of pu- publicity that i heard about wonka was how much um hugh grant hated filming this movie oh, you hear that really? you hear that about him all the time he always seems like he's just a piss pot on he, set and the only reason he did it was because he has five kids and he needed money. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I really like him le- these days on like stuff I've yeah, seen. The Gentleman, yeah. this. Uh, what was the other one? I really kind of. Oh, uh, the D and D movie. I thought he was great in that. Like he did love him in. Uh, he's great. The D&D movie. He's just such a he's such a curmudgeon though. It sounds like he's just kind of a pisser. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Yeah. Like, I wasn't he? Wasn't he kind of a at, butt at the Golden Globes or something? Some, there was something where he was like getting oh, interviewed, yeah. and he was just kind of an ass, a little short or dismissive or something with the person who was, you know. Which, granted, those those red carpet interviews are. I know. I kind of. Yeah. I, I kind of agreed with him, but I was also like, yeah. "Well, when in Rome, I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, over you're there? there to do. Yeah, you're there to promote your thing. So do that and, and move along. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. It is what I mean. Every job has the ability to be a job, even the coolest job, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you kind of forget. And that, I think that's where he's at. He's just like, uh, it's a paycheck. Yeah, kind of I get Boy, it. Boy, this but... uh, this director Paul King is on the rise. His last three films have been Paddington, Paddington Two, and Wonka. Oh wow, that's like <laughs> that's that? a, that's quite a a sudden step into Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes sense of why Hugh Grant was in. Wonka because he probably worked with him on Paddington because yeah. he was uh oh he's also that. in that I never saw those Paddington movies sure. I, I didn't either I hear they're good yeah very good yeah yeah people are into them um I don't know why yeah. I mean it just didn't seem like a thing I should go see in theaters it just felt I don't know why it just just mm-hmm. felt weird and then I never got around to seeing it at home maybe I should finally watch those but maybe he's your next big um you know Spielberg Christopher Columbus style uh uh director type dude who go on yeah. do it's great cer- it's certainly possible and yeah. like the answer to the question my answer to the question why does this movie exist no one asked for it is warner brothers man they like they have to do this yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> is what they, they they look around for like what are, what properties do we have that we could mine for gold yeah yeah i think it did okay this, the go way ahead. that they set this up because you don't 
so you get the Oompa Loompa, like he saved the Oompa Loompas, but that mm-hmm. they didn't really address that in this movie. So I'm like, they're probably if this would have. I guess it did well. I don't know if it did well mm-hmm. or not. I think it did I think well. It did pretty well. Yeah, yeah. it made back its money. set it up for um, a Wonka 2 where you get more of the Oompa Loompa story. Sure. I really don't think Hugh Grant would have agreed to Yeah. I mean, it's another paycheck. Maybe you will. Yeah. He'll just be grumpy well, on set. He'll just be like, ah, I freaking hate this. I want to go back to Notting Hill and make out with, um, <laughs> what's her name? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, um, the great, by the way, great cast in this thing. I just came off of watching all of Peep Show. So uh, Patterson Joseph, who is uh, the head of one of the rival candy companies, uh, oh, and as well uh, as Matt Slug- Lucas. Like, yeah. Yeah. Slugworth. Slugworth. Can exactly. we have a recommendals where we don't mention Olivia Coleman? <laughs> no, we cannot because she's excellent in this one too. Uh, uh, Matt Lucas, uh, British Bake Off co host and. Oh, little bald guy. The little bald guy. Yeah, little yep. uh yeah, yeah. I like him. He's great. I didn't uh, know he was in this. Yeah. It's it's um it's I really enjoyed movie. this. I'm glad you're recommending it. Yeah. I did. I, and the kids it really enjoyed it. It's it was for the kids, right? I mean it's, it's for really, the yeah. children. Yeah. Trying to get them yeah. into that you every generation you try to get them into like what was popular when their parents were kids and it's a nice is there is there a freaky uh water tunnel uh where they get all yelled at and see a bunch of crazy (laughs) shit there is not okay this is this is the scrappiness of wonka when he first starts out and penetrating the chocolate lord's business yeah. I guess. yeah the chocolate Lord. you know you know what they don't do is they don't indiana jones this and have every wonka thing get every part of his origin story get introduced in the space of about 10 minutes where it's like this is why i like uh, chocolate this is why i uh have that horrible tunnel this is why i cover things with soap and bubbles and yeah yeah that's i i mean when i was a kid a hard, that first mo- that first movie was really a big deal these days mm-hmm. It's harder for me to get as excited about this sort of stuff, I think, than when you're a kid, because obviously you're a kid and these are made for kids. Mm-hmm. But if a movie's made well, it it ha- will have aspects to it that you know adults can get into, like Bluey and some of these shows yeah. like that. And it sounds like this does a decent job of that. There's nostalgia there for the old thing. There's some funny stuff that only adults would really chuckle at. Um, so... Yeah, yeah, I just I'll get around to seeing this. I think I'd say I'd say it's the only really good thing that Timothy Chalamet has done recently. Yeah, <laughs> you know you can you can go there if you'd like to go there, but that this gives is, this is what I find out if if uh, Scott's looking or listening yeah. to me or typing yeah. something up. And <laughs> uh, you know we can always go there. It's totally fine with me. Um, yeah. Right, so I, now you're not allowed to even mention Dune the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are, I've already gone over my allotment of two or whatever it was, so we're already we're already in uh, that you space. It's going to be like a fairy road thing. Oh, it's wor- very oh, it's, yes. it's almost worse, and except for you, Scott, yeah, there, there's going to be a, a series for um, but isn't there a series coming for for, for, for Rosa no Rosa? for Dune? There is uh, Dune's getting a <laughs> spin out Children of Dune new series type era uh, thing. I forgot what's called Awakening or no, that's the video game that's also coming out. That looks awesome. But the yeah, all I can think about is Doom. But yesterday, the new uh, Furiosa trailer dropped, and uh, you're all lucky. I'm not talking about that all day. <laughs> well, though, but but uh, Nicole's right. Actually, that is setting up a uh, a sitcom. Uh, <laughs> everybody loves Furiosa, and it's going to be airing on CBS starting uh, this fall. Can't wait! Oh, oh my god! It's a movie. I thought it was a. Sh- I thought it was a series. No, that's a movie. Oh. That's a sequel. Uh, that's a proper sequel. That's George Miller out in the desert filming shit. Technically prequel. Yeah. Yeah. I I watched that th- uh, trailer 13 times yesterday. So. <laughs> I'm sure you. Did. I really did. I paused yeah. it. I looked at screens. It's a Bruder tape. In. I'm sure you analyzed that thing. <laughs> oh, 100 percent, dude. I'm zooming in on weird little details. Who's that guy in the background? Uh-huh. What's that would, guy doing? Uh, Brian, I would love to get with you and write some like all in the Furiosa fanfic. <laughs> all in the Furiosa. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, I'm very. I could not be more excited about it. But until then, yeah, Dune's all consuming. It's all I can think about. Uh, all right, Randy, let's dive over to your portion here. We got a clip and you'll set it up for us. What are we doing? I have mentioned this before and I just, uh, when it was started streaming, I went and watched it because it's, I think one of my top 10 favorite movies of the 2010s. 
I think, which mm. is just wild to me. Uh, but I just get I just gave you a few seconds of the beginning of this movie because there's no point in playing too much. All right, here we go. Cool with that. I don't remember this. Oh my gosh. It's the very, very beginning of the Lego Batman movie. Oh shit. Which okay. came out in 2017. Seems like uh longer. I don't know why. Mm. Um, and it's the answer to my question when uh who's your favorite Batman? Yes, Will Arnett is my favorite <laughs> Batman of all time. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It is so good, guys. Mm. Yeah, I'd love you that know. movie. It's maybe more I like it more than the than the Lego movie. Um I don't know if that's sacrosanct to say that that actually no that actually makes me want to see because i was like meh on the lego movies and i haven't seen lego batman so oh I my gosh I need to see it. Yeah. i don't really think of the other lego movies like i, I would just say uh, this one this is the this is the lego movie like yeah it's really it's good perfect. it's funny in a way that the others aren't it's more for us it feels like i don't know there's something there's special sauce in that one and yes it's still will arnett like moving you. forward from the other one and you know he did batman and that as well but this was the perfect little spinoff, and I I adore it. This one's this one's great. So it's a good it's a good pick. I can't believe that was 2017. It feels like two minutes ago. It's weird to me. Yeah, I can't I can't explain it. But it's just it's just so it's so natural it feeling, which is really hard to explain. So you just have to watch it. Like it feels like the the perfect Batman movie. <laughs> yeah. like like cool. you could have done this in any other way you know like this could have been an animated uh with with you know like hyper stylized it could have been watercolor it could have been live action although it, live action would have been a stretch to get all, all these people to do all these things but like it's just perfect it's yeah. just perfect batman movie. it's really good it, i would put it in top three batman movies for me i think my list goes dark knight number two the batman Ooh, wow, nope. that's a strong case. Right and number there. three, Lego Batman, and then the rest. All the way down to the wow. shitty ones. Yeah. And our second mention of uh, Michael Sarah in Recommendals today, too. Oh, yeah. Well, we like yes. that guy. He's and great. This is a this is a straight comedy. Like this this movie is funny from beginning to end, and Michael Sarah has the uh, enviable job of being a disjointed Robin, like a, a Robin <laughs> who is who is so down for whatever and batman is just like meh i don't know mm -hmm. huh yeah i it's great brian if you've not seen it it is a hoot and it's also i don't know it has heart it's just good wow just a good yeah. movie. Uh, oh my gosh a guy whose uh wikipedia page i was on for quite a while is in this uh, mark jonathan davis aka richard yeah. cheese oh thing. oh richard yeah. cheese eh Mm. Dick Cheese, as we call him. Dick Cheese. Yeah, yeah no super, cameras. Super, super bit role. Yeah, um, he's only in yeah. this because oh, he's, he's a super, super bit guy. Yeah, so he's kind of a yeah. bit guy. But also, he they basically he said, "Look, is this got cameras like live action?" They said, "No." <laughs> That's right. This is going to go on social media. Is it okay that I'm in? Okay, yeah. it's just cartoons of like Lego people. All right, I'm fine. It, um, it really, it really Brian? makes the most of voice actors like if if you love jenny slate like i do hmm. if you love jason mansukas conan o'brien is in this uh it just like everybody billy d williams is two-faced funny 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 great two-faced yeah isn't he too he's harvey dent in the uh movies for um uh, tim burton movies he was harvey dent uh billy d williams so that was kind of like a funny little yeah, yeah. he's actual yeah. two-faced in they this switched though. to billy bob thornton right oh i don't know was he who, did, who was uh who was two face in the um when they when two face was an actual villain and not the tim burton one but in the um oh. schumacher oh that was uh that that's uh, uh no country not for billy old bob men Thornton. it was the it was uh, not it was, uh no country uh, for old men yes uh outhouse shithouse hen house and farmhouse oh, uh, tommy lee jones tommy lee Jeez. jones i knew it was three three names i could not get billy bob thornton out of my damn head uh. That was hard. That was painful for everyone. It was. It was painful for everyone. Yeah. So he became the new Two Face uh, after they replaced Billy D. Williams with him. Yeah. This I just it goes on and on and on. This movie has both Garfunkel and Oates. Uh, of Garfunkel <laughs> and Oates. This, nice. Um, this movie has Ellie Kemper in it. I like. Oh. I I didn't until this viewing. I never noticed that Ellie Kemper was in this movie. And of course, she's awesome. She's always awesome. Yeah. Everyone cool. loves Ellie Kemper. Are you kidding me? Uh, well, that's awesome. Uh, go see it. Where is this again? Streaming. Amazon Prime. Nice. Cool. Amazon Prime is your friend today, but only today. All right. Uh, let's get to mine. It's a quick one. And uh, I cannot recommend this thing enough. And you're all going to roll your eyes because you're going to think, oh, it has to do with Dune. Well, it does, but not the Dune you're thinking of. And I have my daughter to thank for this because she's the one that told me about it. 
Uh, I'll play a clip. This I told you about this. Of- you did? Did you tell me about this? <laughs> years ago. Years and years ago. I told you. This is like one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. And oh. I told you about it and you didn't watch it. I must have oh. forgotten. Well, oh. it turns out no, my daughter I- my daughter has more sway than you, it turns out. <laughs> anyway, here it is. This system make of us slaves without dignity, without debt, no? with a devil in our, in our pocket, this this incredible money I in the pocket this money this 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 shit this nothing this paper who have nothing inside movies have heart boom 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 have mind have power have ambition I wanted to do something like that why not yeah, why not indeed, why says not? Uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Um, this is Jodorowsky's Dune, and it is uh, a documentary, as Randy said. This came out in 2013, uh, which is probably about the time you recommended it to me. Uh, and I forgot all about it. Um, no, anyway, not Randy Parasite. It, it yeah, was Parasite. On Netflix for, it was on Netflix for years. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I I just I don't know what stopped me. But I, this is the kind of thing you, I would I should have gotten onto. This this turned out to be one of my favorite things I've seen in a very long time, doc- documentary wow. wise. Uh, it's basically the story of a cult film director. His name was Alejandro Jodorowsky. Still still alive. He's in his nineties now. Um, this he'd been in his eighties here. A uh, very ambitious dude who went, uh, you know, started some very strange films in the late 60s, early 70s. And they're the, some of the oddest things ever. And even just the clips they showed in this documentary, it's like, what the frick was going on with this guy? Well, he got the rights back in the uh, early 70s to do Dune, Frank Herbert's Dune. And he got it easily. It was very cheap to get those rights because nobody thought this was going to work out. <laughs> Everyone thought there's no way you're making Dune into a film. And they said, go ahead and try. Here are the rights to give it a shot. So he po- started to pool the most amazing team you've ever heard of. And this documentary goes through all of that process of him seeking out people like H.R. Giger, who uh, ended up being on the project, and Chris Foss, one of the greatest um, science fiction uh, like book co- cover and concept artists ever. Uh, still around. Chris Voss is amazing. Um, uh, uh, Salvador Dali, of all people, <laughs> oh, wow, uh, was was involved in this thing. Was actually going to be in it. Was going to be the emperor for a hot second. Um, that didn't really work out. This, the uh, d- uh, he was going to cast his son Brontus jo- uh, Jodorowsky as the as the role of Paul Atreides. Okay. And that guy turns out is in a ton of stuff. The guy's working. He's got he's, oh, he's really? doing things. Yeah, he was in um, is it Prometheus. Anyway, a lot of smaller oh. roles, but a ton of stuff. You've seen him in The Last Duel, uh, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, or whatever that's called, a bunch of other stuff. Um, anyway, he was supposed to be Paul. Uh, they had um, uh, these other concept. Oh, uh, uh, I almost forgot to say, um, the French guy. Uh, oh, geez, the artist. Uh, he's dead now. Died right around the time the movie came out. His name was Mobius. Um, oh, and oh that explains the poster. Yeah, like very, looking, very Mobius, Mobius okay. looking, right? Um, and some yeah. of that's Mobius, some of that is Chris v- uh, Voss, but or Foss rather. But it's, it's, it's just a crazy amount of talent, especially that era's kind of talent. At one point, Brian, I, I thought of you for just because you love music. Um, it was going to yeah. star uh, what's his name from the Stones. Can't think of his name all of a sudden. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Yeah. He was going to be Tangerine the... Dream was tied to this for all. Mike Oldfield, who did the um, the Exorcist theme and Tubular Bells and all that yep. stuff. They had they had tapped at one point the entirety of Pink Floyd to do Pink Floyd. The whole Look thing. at that. Yeah. This wow. weird. Uh, the, uh, I forgot the other band. There's another band in there that's very weird. Anyway, they had this just magma. Ma- yeah, that's magma. It. That's yeah. it. Magma. Well, and and he had... was talking to the Rolling Stones. Right. Right. Yeah. Red on air light. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the whole point is, uh, what was my point? My point is he, he had all these people, all this stuff to do and had this giant book made, had what, four or five copies or something like that made. And then he sends them to studios to propose this thing. And they all are impressed, but they all turn it down and nobody really wants to give him the money. 
And they get into the idea, or he talks about how, you know, the thing finally got made in 84 and that it wasn't good. And he was kind of glad about that. And he, and he wrestled with this feeling of why should I be glad that other creatives couldn't pull it off when, you know, and it, there's, there's like a subtext of the creative process and what failure does to you as a creative and all this sort of stuff. Um, and also, here's the part that really hit me. They describe it in the movie as Dune in that at that time was like a comet that was headed right toward Earth. And then at the last second, it veered off, but it seeded the planet with a bunch of dust. And then they started showing all of these examples of stuff that Jodorowsky's Doom 100% inspired things in Star yeah. Wars, things in uh, a Probably bunch Probably an of, alien because of Geiger. Well, literally, the, the Geiger... Or, or Giger, rather. I always forget it's Giger. Or Giger, yeah. Uh, Giger and the and the head of special effects for um, Alien were both doing those same oh, two jobs this. on this. Okay. And so that's how they cooked up. That's how they met Ridley Scott. That's how they went on to do their thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so the whole point was like, all these little things happen. Even though that project never got lifted off, all these ideas got used by somebody. And even Prometheus, like more recent stuff, there's a there's straight up like things in the movie that are right out of these illustrations, like right out of these concept art mm -hmm. things. And um, I mean, he really did have the movie kind of frame by frame uh, storyboarded by Mobius. This whole thing was up, written out, which is how they were trying to sell the movie. And he, they wanted 15 million back in the 70s. That was a lot of money. The studios thought it was going to go over budget. They just didn't trust it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you bring it current. It's crazy where we're at now. And this is the biggest selling movie yeah. of the year and all that. It is so good and so fascinating and so if you are, I'll put it this way. If you're an artist or a creator of any kind and you're lacking a little inspiration right now for big ideas and breaking through and finding, finding more inside your creative brain and that sort of thing, this movie is a big inspiration. I'm curious, Scott, about it. your take on the subtext, though, because like the entire documentary is kind of giving you the impression that what these all these people do is the basis of doing drugs like oh i see what you're says, saying yeah everything he says he sounds like he's tripping like i he's mean a, a little bit time. like he he says for example one of his goals was he says he wanted to make a profit not a movie he wanted to make a thing that <laughs> fundamentally changed everybody like he was really crazy about it. Like in a way, in, in a way, he wanted to be yeah. the spice that is in the that that is represented. <laughs> he wanted to be the melange of filmmakers and have everybody affected by it and 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 all that. And so he had really high minded ideas about it. But also he he would say things high like, "Well, minded. yeah." High He's minded. like, "I want to make a <laughs> I want to make a movie that mimics LSD's effects, but not." have everyone take drugs i want it to be like that though. right he would take the drug but then the audience <laughs> right. didn't need to take the drug right oh, it's God. also another good example of somebody taking material and adapting it like an adaptation people forget that adaptation is a lot about a director or writer a screenwriter's uh own vision so when people complain about oh uh villainu changed these three things about the dune movies i don't like that they changed that from the books this will always happen. You will always have changes. And this movie was going to have some really weird changes. Like his plans were wackadoo. The way this thing ends, completely gnarly and weird. Like I don't even want to give it away because it's a, you need to hear what they had planned if you're a Dune fan at all. Now, if you come into this as a reader of the books or a lover of the movies or even if you like the 84 business, you're going to get more out of this than if you have not had any connection with Dune at all. I will say that. It's not a bad documentary for just someone green. I'm just saying it will benefit you. You will like it even more if you're into the material. And I could not could not recommend this enough. It's right now it's on HBO Max and uh along with all the other Dune shit that got up there other than the new movie uh, including part 1 and it is so so good. So first of all, Randy, apologies. Didn't I didn't know what I didn't know what you had handed me years ago. All right, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, but also thanks to Carter, who's been riding me to watch it for about I don't know a month or two, more than that maybe. It is so freaking good, and I'm just saying to all you artists out there, even if you're just doing it for fun, just creatives in general, this thing is so for you, and it will inspire you. So go watch it. All right, cool. That's Jodorowsky's Dune, cool. spelled J O D O Rowsky. I, I just want to repeat for you, this is about 
the attempted making of a first Dune film before the first Dune film. Correct. Like that is yeah. that is a a really it's kind of a, a rough thing to understand if you haven't been. You know, yeah, it's a failed attempt to make movies. that movie, and and it's the fa- it's in the failing that we learn a lot. Like there's a lot here to take away from it, and it's nothing to do with David Lynch's attempt. Well, and there's just um, a bunch of Alejandro Odorowski like saying cool stuff throughout this movie. Oh yeah, and he goes back this and forth. That guy, the guy's interesting because he goes back and forth between Spanish and um, and English. He's Chilean by by origin, spent time in France and all these other places. And his son has a weird like ten accents in one kind of voice. It's really weird. Uh, obviously, spent you know spent his life going all around the world, but uh, yeah, it's mostly Spanish, and then mixed with some English. So there's some subtitles and stuff, but. That guy's that guy's passion, even at eighty five, is just this palpable weird thing. I've never seen a guy more excited about making shit <laughs> than this guy. So I, yeah, I, I recommend it full heartedly. And they even interview Geiger, Geiger, which is rare. Mm-hmm. He doesn't come out mm-hmm. much. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. That guy doesn't uh, usually do do yeah. interviews. So that's I mean, amazing. he died like a year later, but this is you know he's awesome. Anyway, Don't you love it. Don't you love it when creatives are super, super passionate? Oh like, yeah, because like a lot of them are just you know off doing their art, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Like every now and then, like I got, I was lucky enough to get to know and work with Sam Wise Didier for years, and hmm. like so passionate, like ridiculous, like it just it spills onto you and it makes you want to go draw something. I know that guy. He's a, he's a great example of like a modern example of that. Just so into it that that's all he wants to do is make orcs. You know, that's all he <laughs> wanted to do. Just sit around and draw orcs all day. And he got to, which, you know, how many of us can say that? So anyway, there you go. Three, uh, four, sorry, big recommendals today. Go check them out. They'll be up at quicktms.li. They're probably already there if I know Brian. They are. And uh, go check them out and see for yourself if they're any good. Nicole, it's been a lovely having you here. I hope, you're, I hope your weird um, uh, Discord issues solve themselves one day. Hey, can I promote something? Of course. Of course. Always. So um, I started a channel for our cat Oreo. <laughs> All right, what what sir, what platform are we talking? I, it's on Instagram and TikTok. It is an OnlyFans, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so I got this camera and I put it around his neck, yeah. and he because lo- I I want to see where he goes. Like he, we found him outside. He won't stay inside, mm. and we've put like. A bunch of different collars on them and eventually they pop off so i'm like where are you going so i'm getting this video and i can't stop watching it so i started to upload it to instagram so if you want to see oh my god i totally want to see this oh my god it is the funnest video to watch um what's the is it oreo the cat or what is it ww oreo it's oreo's adventures um and on tiktok i think it's like uh, Oreo walks or something like that. Are they the same on Instagram as the other? Are they different? They're the same videos. No, I mean, so. this is the same URL on Instagram as it is on, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the same slash? No, it's not. Oh. Well, good luck, everybody. Go find those. <laughs> <laughs> when they TWW Oreo, Mark's like, well, maybe you just make something that's apart from the wood whisperer i'm like all right i already created the instagram mm. account so i'll change it on the tiktok account so it's oreo walks on tiktok all right so, cool but you don't remember what it is on uh, instagram what is it instagram uh, again w what instagram is uh tww oreo oh. so he's, he's, okay. a, he's yeah. a black and white yeah he's a black and white um tuxedo cat that we found in a tree and we adopted him and thank you know we couldn't keep him inside, so I quickly had him neutered. Oh, and um, yeah, he just oh, this is awesome. Nice <laughs> trees. He got into to, to a cat fight. I think it was a cat. I couldn't see it. So I'm still playing around with the, like the angle of the camera on oh, his that's collar. Awesome. Yeah, this is a I very like, cool idea. I love it. I got it from another account called Mr. Kidders, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta, I, I gotta do this with Oreo. <laughs> Because I need to know where he goes. What kind of what kind yeah, of camera you can is it? Figure Just out the angle to get it forward instead of looking straight down his legs. Then that'd be great. Yeah. What's the oh, What's this? the camera? What kind of camera is this? Is it like a GoPro or oh, something? Insta three sixty. Insta three sixty. So, um, it's the Insta three sixty um, 
times three, so the third generation of it. Yeah. Uh, but I love it. <laughs> what? <laughs> just watched him jump from one tree to another. Oh my god, this right? is great. Yeah. The one I just uploaded was him climbing a tree, and he gets up pretty. pretty oh high. yeah. So oh, look at this little thing. Um, These are cool. Please, no kidding. Yeah. Kind of yeah, it is an expensive camera. It's just four hundred dollars. I also have a uh, tracker on it. I was going to say, <laughs> you have a way to uh, retrieve said camera. Yeah. If, uh... <laughs> no kidding, that's expensive, but uh, yeah. cool. I love this idea. This is great. Oh Cats. My God, this cat is living his best life with all this. Oh what if the cat? What if? What if you get video of it getting uh, mounted by another cat or something like that? Well, fortunately, the camera's facing the other way, so... Uh... Yeah, and, and Nicole doesn't have to upload those. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I, I, those are I for the OnlyFans like, page. I get, like, 45 minutes of video each time he goes out, so I just kind of scan it, and, uh, yeah, I just... This is great. Oh, I watch. love it, dude. This is great. This is great. So, I wanted to kill a mouse. of the cat licking its butt. I love this. Yeah, there's nothing more... Just, just I mean, reminded that's, me that yeah. I, I haven't seen the guy with the duck on TikTok in a long time. Oh, who was that? Who's the duck guy? Uh, there, oh gosh! Uh, years ago, I used to always see this guy called Two Turnt Tony. <laughs> two Turnt Tony. And he, oh, and he has. A, and he, you just go places with his duck. Oh, here he is. And uh, you just go places with the duck, and like it was great content, fantastic content, because everybody loves the duck. Hmm. Oh yeah, he's got a busy account. Well, well done, two two takes, Tony. What is it? Two two. Sorry, two turn, Tony. <laughs> two turn, to, turn, Tony. It, it drives me crazy that my for you page on TikTok changes and it evolves slowly. And like, there's things that I saw five years ago that I haven't seen since. Yeah, I don't know if those people are still what that means. Sometimes I miss those people. I don't know how to easily find them. TikTok's got a problem with that part. It's all just rando shit. Yeah. Well, they're gonna that whole bill will die in the Senate, and maybe we'll get a better version. I don't know. Do win uh yep doing uh all right that's it uh nicole have a great one we'll see you later brian or randy you know how to do it oh i forgot to mention film sack this weekend we're doing um cowboys and aliens oh that's right versus aliens cowboys v aliens oh, dawn it, of justice is it versus what is it i don't know i don't know what it is cowboys and the aliens who love them the comic is there it is cowboys and i guess it's just cowboys and aliens Cowboys and Aliens, okay. You, right. Neither of us have seen this, right? I haven't seen it. Have I seen saw it a uh, long time ago when it first uh, went to streaming. All right. Well, together, we see it again. I've never seen it, so we'll Broke see how it goes. Brokeback Aliens. Brokeback Aliens. I can't things. quit you, uh, Daniel Craig, at all. That's right. That is Daniel Craig, right? It Isn't is that? Daniel like, Craig. And Harrison Ford, right? Harrison Ford. If I remember correctly? Yeah. I, I think so. Directed by John Favreau, which may be one he regrets. Right. I don't know. Uh, that is it for that. Let's play a quick final call here. Uh, this is a way to tell origin yeah. stories in Marvel movies. This was sent to us via, uh, let's see, oh, I don't know if I have a name, but we'll play it. Hey, this is for TMS. It's uh, Jay from New Hampshire. Um, you guys always talk about, like, you know, um, movies, what they do, you know, the Marvel movies with the origin stories. And I think we're forgetting the Hulk, the one with Edward Norton. Is it um <laughs> when that one in the credits they did his whole story like while the credits were rolling you know you got oh title, that's true blah, 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 yeah you know and it was like i think it was actually even set up like a comic book like i remember it being like pictures but it pretty much told the story how he became the hulk and then we jumped right into the story they need I, to do that again yeah i'm okay with that I am too. I think that's was a cool it the way to do one it. Or was it the Banda one that did? I thought it was the Banda one that did leaned really heavily into the comic book look. They did the, for most of the movie, right? Ban the Banda one would have that's frames right. In it the was film. the that's yeah. right for the movie itself. They did the yeah. And right. I remember one of the Brainy Spider Mans. It may have been yes. two did this, or or like caught up the story to two. Two did the previously on Spider Man as with the with the origin in the opening credits with the comic books. Yep, yeah. really well drawn, like cool. Yeah cool drawn comic book intro i would be all for that idea though i'm all about i don't need another telling of batman or anyone else's story i don't agreed and you what? know if nothing else that gives people a reason to go find the original comics and get the origins themselves you know go go read the uh go read the comics to find out the origin yeah i completely agree uh i like mm -hmm. that idea though I, and i don't mm -hmm. remember what movie it was if it was the hulk i'm i have very you're right that they didn't really get into Edward Norton getting zapped by gamma rays, I don't think. Mm -mm. No. So they must have told it that way. 
which yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm for that yeah begin the fantastic four film with the with the four of them coming out of uh, the the negative zone where they've been spending the last uh 20 years and uh they've missed the blip they missed uh the avengers they missed all that stuff and and I love it. Or maybe this is the 50s or something. They've been stuck there. I really want like 50s, 60s vibe in that. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. we're going to get it. That card they made with the actors on it kind of seems it like they kind might. Of, it's kind of got that look, yeah. No way to tell till we get it. There'll probably right. be some time travel bullshit, but uh, I don't care. I'm in. Fantastic Four is a thing. I, I really legitimately am looking forward to that. So, And I know that trailer for Star Wars, the new, or the whatever, not the New Republic, whatever it was called. The Acolyte thing, yeah. Yeah, during the High Republic stuff. Mm -hmm. Very interested in that because that's a fun, that's a fun era we never spend time in. So, yeah, looking forward to that. And, of course, there is a brand new Furiosa trailer 2 out. You guys should go check (laughs) it out. It is amazing. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to watch X-Men 97 episode one today or if I'm going to wait and uh, hopefully watch it with you and Brian on uh, Friday. We don't know. I don't know what time yet. So we got to talk. Let's talk offline. For yeah, you we'll get a we'll start. get a combo going because I don't know what our plans are either. But yeah, aren't they? Aren't, they're launching some of it or not all of it or what's the deal? I thought the first uh, episode is out. I, are they do, I think they're doing it week by week, but I might be wrong. Mm. Shit. Yeah, I think you're right. And yeah. that's a bummer. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's it's fine. It. We can do it. Builds all the time. builds anticipation. That's right. Anticipation. You'll just you'll know it as soon as you uh, see a giant X on Magneto's or no <laughs> giant M M big yep. M. He's the <laughs> he's the <laughs> magnetic M M&M. and M. He's got metal in him. Ooh, Sean Bloom says new Alien movie trailer out today. <gasps> alien movie or the show? Really? Is it the show or the, t- is it the uh, Noah Hawley deal or oh, is it a new? Probably doesn't matter because I'll take it no matter what. Whatever it is, I want it. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. We got some news. Alien Romulus. Uh, director Fane Alrez restores series Handmade mm, Roots. It's a movie. It is a movie. All right. I'll be watching that right after this. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, bring all my genre in one year. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, boy, the, the new Ghostbusters getting some sour reviews. That's bumming me Is out. Is it really? Oh, yeah. bummer. I've got tickets for it tomorrow night, but hopefully I enjoy the food. I'll enjoy. I will. I hold more sway with your review than I will the critics, so yeah. you tell me what Did you, you think. You saw Afterlife. Oh, no, you haven't seen Afterlife yet. No. Oh. Get I want it. to. I want to see it. I just keep It's forgetting. almost like you hate Ghostbusters. <laughs> I hate what they sometimes do to Ghostbusters. So I'm always a little nervous about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters 2 is easy to hate. <laughs> oh, that was such a bad movie. Yeah. Some people want to forget that it was, but it was so bad, you guys. Yeah. It's not just in modern times where we have shitty sequels. I no, think. That whole movie is drippings with goo, which is what that is. It's really yeah. bad. Uh, all right. Uh, that's the end of that. Let's get out of here. Oh, I've, I forgot about this email. Uh, Michael wrote in. It's about the alarm sound. Uh, this whole thing, I'll play it one more time. That. Uh-huh. <laughs> Scott, your doom alarm reminded me of this moment. Uh, this is us. Uh, oh, I, I forgot. He says, hello, Sar Duker and Bene Jesuit. 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 Not Jesuit. Uh, Jesuit. Uh-huh. Yeah, got to make sure I say it right now. I'm not a person who usually is affected by ASMR, but when you played that Sudukar language sound clip in the middle of the show last week, it hit me with the full shivers. Mm-hmm. says, I work in a kitchen and I had to stop what I was doing at that moment because of that sound. I don't know what that says about me as a person that I react in such a way to the holy language of the brutal super soldier society. <laughs> anyway, the spice must flow uh, is in your show, though, he says. On a second note, if this ends up on the show, uh, you don't have to read it. I love Dune and I, uh, I'm going to read it anyway, so we're reading it. I love Dune and I've read the first three books. I think these movies are visually impactful or sorry, are a very sorry, are a visually impactful interpretation of the story. Unfortunately for me, they chose to leave out a lot of the concepts that I really love in Dune. They completely got rid of the Bene Gesserit fighting scene uh, and really downplayed the roles of the Mentats. Mentats, I agree with that part. I wish there was more Mentat stuff. Oh, I love that actor too. I wanted more of him in Dune too, but I guess not. Yeah, Yeah. he's awesome. And the guys in the helmets earlier that they showed in the first one, Oh, right. We just get a visual, and if you know the books, you're yeah. immediately like, ooh, mentats, mentats, and they're addicted to freaking spice, and this is, they're like supercomputers, uh, and then they just go right past it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. He says he thinks it really hurts the story. Uh, if they do a third one, he wants to see Guild Navigators. Michael, I, I mean, I agree. All of that stuff's really interesting. Um, and especially after seeing that documentary, I realized more than ever what we're watching is a combination of money being spent. Um, 
the time it's made, the technology that exists when it's made, and a director's vision specifically, all of those things go into an ad- adaptation. And it means that there is no such thing as a book with a perfect adaptation. They don't exist. Mm-hmm. Even your favorites are missing huge swaths of stuff you wish yeah, was in there. There's just no way, unless it's a short story. <laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna fit in a three hour movie. No, and if likely. you get if you go like, hey, let's get really into the Mentats, that's a whole separate like that's a whole other movie. It's a whole series you could do. Mm-hmm. And maybe mm-hmm. they will, you know, maybe that stuff's coming. Yeah. Um, but I don't I, I don't fault it's hard for me to find faults in any of this because the adaptation is so sweeping and good. I forgive all that. It's not hard for me. You cannot do it. There's no such thing as taking the books of anything and making them perfect. It just won't happen. Because books are books. And we have books those. Books. We can go read those. That's still a good thing we can do. And then the movies are like, yeah, two-hour uh, scrunching down of what I love. And it's good enough. It's good mm-hmm. enough. Uh, that's it for us. We're done. Uh, if you want to email us, uh, you, have a, you have a thing you want to say about any of that or anything else here on the show, you can do it at the, uh, the morning stream at gmail.com. You can also text us and voicemail us at uh, 801-471-0462. All other links can be found at frogpants.com slash TMS. Brian, there's only one thing left to do. Just one. A music selection from Brian! That, that's right. This is a short and sweet request from Kim. It says, this is for my husband Trey for his birthday, which was on March 11th. 311 day, everybody. Yeah. Um, but that's not what we're playing. He wanted to hear a cover of 500 Miles by The Proclaimers. Uh, of course, happy to do that. This is, um, uh, the song is called I'm Gonna Be, and then parenthetical 500 Miles. This is a great punk version of it by MXPX, as, as punk as they get. <laughs> they're not super punk, but they're, mm. they're, uh, punk light. Yeah. Uh, yacht punk. <laughs> <laughs> From their 2009 album, On the Cover 2, here is their cover of The Proclaimers, I'm Gonna Be, 500 Miles. See you guys tomorrow. Get more at frogpants.com. This place is a lunatic asylum. Well, I don't disagree. Asylum.